Series is proudly brought to you by Uncle Toby's in association with Solo Lemon Crush and Daihatsu Barosa, the tough four-wheel drive. Toby's Super Series and only the fittest will survive. Freshwater Beach today plays host to the cutthroat survival test. No seedings, no free rides. Forced to qualify through two heartbreaking semi-finals, only 21 of the 35 Ironmen are still alive for today's five races. Three rounds so far, three separate winners. The marathon on the Gold Coast provided veteran Scott Thompson with his first ever victory in the series. Well done, Scott Thompson! Round two, Newcastle Beach and hometown hero Guy Andrews made the perfect return to his old stamping ground. No waves, but no shortage of action in round three at Manly Beach. A thrilling final run week. It came down to Thompson and Trevor Hendy in a sprint finish. Has come through and won the round three. The giants of the surf, the boats made their mark at Freshwater last season. Oh, Manly be creamed! Manly. This time, they're out to do the same, but the competition even tougher. On adjusted points, Michael King leads the series. Scott Thompson can continues to surprise. Guy Andrews set to pounce while Hendy is back to his best. Today, only one will survive. Freshwater was discovered by Governor Phillip when he led an exploratory party here in 1788. Bathing began at the turn of the century and the beach got its name when campers discovered a lovely freshwater stream at the northern end. So today, round four, we go through the halfway point of the series, and so far we've had three different winners. Will that trend continue here on Sydney's Northern Peninsula? It's a very exciting, exacting format. Michael Parra, what's the key to survival? Well, it is called survival, Gordon, that's right. There are five separate races, 21 starters, and what happens is we have, as I said, five races, five drop out after the first one, then after that, four drop out each race until we are left with four survivors. The winner of that last race is the overall winner. OK, let's look at the series points then, and it's a fascinating situation. Well, it is. We look at the overall points. It's Michael King, Scott Thompson, Simon Martin doing so well, Andrew Mickle, Guy Andrews, Dwayne Thighs in six, then Scott Reeves, Jay Gilbert, Philip Clayton expected to do well here today. There's Trevor Hendy in 10th place. He'll, uh, I think, make up a lot of ground today. John Robinson right then through to Hayden Reese in 17. We then have uh, 19 through to 23 with Craig Rennington trying to get into that top 20. We then have uh, Sean Parks, Came in, who came in late into the series, down to Scott Mortimer. And then lastly, Joshua Blair and Clint Robinson starting today. OK, let's check the weather conditions now with our roving beach boy. He's decked out in his Nordica gear. Tim Bailey with the Stingo's weather report. Yes, they're light, bright and out of sight. A bit like freshwater beach itself. The birthplace of Australian surfing. The Duke, the big Hawaiian Duke, first rode aboard here in 1914. The Redwood Plank still up at the Freshwater Surf Life Saving Club. They call this place the Hidden val Valley. The weather, always beautiful. A hot one today, don't worry about that. The temperature 35 degrees. The winds from the east northeast, just call it a zephyr. The water temperature beautiful in there, 19 degrees on the big toe. The swell less than half a metre, not many waves to worry about. The UV slip, slop, slap, it's a hot one. Thanks, Tim. Yes, our man on the water on solo ski cam, alias Captain Star Trek, Grant Kinney. Thanks very much, Gordon. Yes, well, uh, 20 of Australia's greatest Ironmen to do battle here in these flat but very tough conditions at Freshwater. Elimina an elimination rounds conducted yesterday. Let's take a quick look at how they went. In the beginning, 30 Ironmen lined up for the two semi-finals. The first race featured the likes of Michael King, Olympic kayak champion Clint Robinson and Guy Andrews. But it was young Phil Clayton from North Wollongong who stole the show, grabbing a great wave in the swim to open up a 30-second lead. Clint Robinson a long way last. With only the top 10 from each semi-final surviving, the big names made their move in the board leg. But Clayton was going further ahead. 
The final ski leg saw Clint Robinson fly through the field to secure his place for Sunday. But there was no stopping Phil Clayton, who led the field home from Martin and Robinson, missing out John Robinson, who was third in last year's survival test. The stars clashed in semi-final number two. The pace was fierce with Craig Riddington showing his prowess in the swim, while Scott Thompson continued his good form. Back in 12th position after the swim was Trevor Hendy. Dwayne Tyres was leading the board, but missed a wave and dropped out of the top 10. Hendy moved into the lead with Thompson and Hayden Reese. The final leg, the ski, and Hendy was at his best, catching a great wave to lead the field home. Jonathan Crow easily made it through, along with Thompson, Tyres, and Jay Gilbert, missing out in a surprise, Andrew Meikle and Sean Kenny. Thanks, Terry Kennedy. Yes, we're down to 21 for survival round four of the Uncle Toby Super Series. And in 1994, it's been a real watershed. Just 11 of the top 20 contracted have made it through to the last 21. Three wild cards and seven trialists, Michael Porra. Yes, a few upsets, that's for sure. So here is the final. Trevor Handy, Michael King, Guy Andrews, Dwayne Thighs. They're the big four for today. Right through Simon Martin, I expect big things from Jonathan Crow. A comeback certainly pending from him. Clint Robinson. Finished third in this race last year, has to be a chance with Jay Gilbert and Phil Clayton, the youngster, with, in with a big show. Josh Blair, Nathan Meyer and Kane Husner from Maroubra. So it's an explosive sprint test, but endurance when you come down to five races overall, swim board ski to start. Yes, and uh, as we've said all day, all uh, summer, I'm sorry, the starts are just so important, but okay, never so more important than hands. today. We're going straight into a swim here. There are 21 competitors, five will drop out, the final five. You can see there Michael King, second from the left, as Kieran Perkins, Australia's great 1,500-metre swimmer, gets them underway. And you can see right in the middle of the screen there, Simon Martin, the big fella, doing well. Jonathan Crow, they're all there. All the names are there. This is going to be fast. Guy, I'm interested in your comments. In previous years, some of the top guys could perhaps relax a little bit in these first rounds, but the depth, there's so much depth now that even in, in the first race today, you can't go easy. That's right. I was talking to Trevi yesterday in the semi-finals, and he actually said to me for the first, uh, this is the first year where he really felt that, uh, you know, you couldn't take it too easy in semi-finals. There's so much depth now coming through the trials in the last two years that one mistake, a little bit off in your day, and you can miss out in the final. So all the guys, even this race today with 21 in it, are going to be in a situation where they're going to flood out off the start. And Grant Kenny, what a, what a start from Clint Robinson. Yeah, I think Clint knew that he had to be out in the, uh, the lead part of the pack early on in the piece. He's dropping back... Very quickly now, though, at the hands of Trevor Hendy and Michael King, and uh, of course a, a great young performer, um, Philip Clayton from New. Uh, yes, Wollongong, uh, Philip Clayton. That's right. And both of those, Hendy and Clayton, now setting the pace in this swim. Jonathan Crow's right there, and as we speak, Clint, with every stroke, goes back about a half a metre back into the pack, and is now getting virtually swum on top of. Yes, and uh, you can see Michael King in the yellow leader circuit. Singlet, he's wearing it for the first time in Uncle Toby's history. Michael King and up there in the leading fray. Let's have a look at the course circuit. So it starts with the swim, as I said. They're those two inside orange boys. They go around those, back to the beach, a short run. Then they go out for the board around the outside yellow boys, back to the beach for another run. And then right outside to the ski boys, and then back to the beach. The whole race will take about 12 minutes. It is very, very short. They're already going across the uh, beach. And Terry Kennedy, nothing in it from first to last. Good tactics from Clint Robinson to get himself into the middle of that pack and get sucked along. Yeah, he hates this swim leg, doesn't he? But wait till he gets on the ski and have a look at him go then. What about Philip Clayton? 12 months ago, he made the drive from North Wollongong up to Freshwater Beach. He watched this event and he said, I got so excited on the sidelines, I just could not wait to be involved. Now, 12 months later, he's leading the field around the turning boy in the swim leg in the survival test. What a great achievement. Grant Kenny, I just can't believe how fast this young uh, Philip Clayton swims. Yeah, he, he is making guys with the calibre of uh, Craig Riddington, Michael King, Trevor Handy, look like they're in another race. He's pulled about three body lengths now. Craig Riddington's come through the field. Trevor Handy has dropped back into about fifth position after an uncharacteristically aggressive start from Trevor and a swim leg. But uh, Phil Clayton making absolutely no mistakes here, really stretching it out, and he will have the first opportunity to capitalise on whatever little waves do come through here today. Well, I've got to say, Guy, it's very unusual in a, in a, in a field like this 
and also with the surf fairly flat, that someone is able to actually break away and actually drag, get all the guys off his feet. He really is looking like he's a cut above the, the rest in uh, the swimming area. Well, we'll put this into context here. Kieran Perkins started the race. He is the fastest 400 metre swimmer in the world with the world record. This kid's not much far, not much slower than he, and he's probably about five to seven seconds faster than the next 400 metre swimmer in the field. And there's a wave behind. Clayton is going. He's just dropped off the back of that wave, and Clayton is going to be terribly unlucky. The whole field is looking for this one. Have a look at this. There's got to be 10 or 15 on it. Clayton desperately trying to lift his legs, but he's been very unlucky. Now he's standing and waiting for this little one. He's still going to get a little run on it. He's doing his best, but he lost that advantage. Now look at the people standing there. They're all there. Now King was in third in the yellow jersey, and he's dropped right back. Clayton first to lift his legs, and there's going to be about 10 guys within the first 10 seconds. Kane Houston is there, Simon Martin, Philip Clayton, Nathan Meyer just coming through. You can see Kane Houston, Jonathan Crowe's there, Brett Tyke, there's Trevor Hendy, Dwayne Thighs right behind him, Hayden Reese is there. We've got uh, Jay Gilbert, Brett Tyke, Craig Riddington, Scott Thompson, Michael King, Scott Reeves, Steve Pullen, and it looked like Corey Hutchings was one of the last ones through. But Tim Bailey, they are all there. Oh, it's an amazing pack. Everyone just desperate to be up the front. You do not want to be down the back because that's where you say bye-bye at the end of this race. What about Philip Clayton? He said to me before the start, I'm going to give the swim absolutely everything and sit back at the end of that. He did that, but then because of waves, he found himself, well, the field was on his toes. Quick smart. It's all in the luck of Ironman racing. But Tim, uh, Clint Robinson was able to, he's in dead last position, but he's only about 20 yards behind the pack, so I reckon he'll qualify. He's got a speedboat on the back of his uh, ski, hasn't he? he you, well, he's got the uh, runs on the board. The yes, survival he... last year, he's, he's done it. He made the final, and he'll do it again this year. He had a frustrating time in the break, uh, Mick. Um, he missed a couple of waves. He didn't panic, though, retained composure, and then picked up a wave and caught up to the field. And he's starting to power now on the board. Yes, he's just hit the water's edge. He's, he's dead last, but he is not far behind the rest of the pack. So that's the scene here, a very exciting opening race. One of five here in round four of the Uncle Toby Super Series. For me, the fact that it's organic is very reassuring because I know there's nothing artificial at it. I think if you care about yourself and your family, you'd have to believe that organic vitamins are better for you. Got the Iron Man Tough Ferosa, now available with four speed automatic. That's who, that's who. Look out for the 1995 yellow pages on your doorstep soon. Iron Man champion Jonathan Crowe demonstrates Stingo's. The sting and itch treatment from Park Davis. Stingo's quickly relieves the pain and reduces the inflammation of mosquito bites, sandfly bites, wasp and bee stings, ants, nettles and sea lice. Stingo's active ingredients help break down insect venoms into harmless substances and quickly and effectively relieves pain and itches. Stingo's. So the sting goes. and starting out in sport, the real motivation is fun. Sport is all about enjoying the contest, but one thing you should always be aware of is that you need to have your own goals, your own set of dreams that you're working towards. Goal setting is about giving yourself a realistic aim, but success really comes down to eating the right food, hard work and getting the best out of yourself. Reach out for your dreams.
6.30 tonight, the most powerful weapon in the world. New people attack with guns. Sequest out of control. The bridge is compromised. I have no time for emergency surfacing procedures. A terrorist looking for answers. My friend can make you talk. A lie. He can make you tell the truth. His mission will shock the world. Who are they? What do they want? This is a battle for the future. I have to destroy Sequest. 6.30 tonight, Sequest DSV. Yes, Freshwater is located between Kurkul cool and Queenscliff, 17 kilometres northeast of the city centre. Temperature here in winter is 16 degrees and in summer up to 25. Well, it's even hotter than today. It's very, very hot out there. Grant Kenny, there's nothing in between them, but Dwayne Thigh is doing a sensational job out in front. Yeah, he's been a big mover. Uh, Mickey's really come through the pack, and, and as I've said all season, I think Dwayne's probably one of the fastest Ironmen in this field. He's had an enormous amount of bad luck so far in the series. And uh, he's coming through now to hopefully capitalise on the position that he's been able to establish. He's in front of the pack, right behind him though, breathing down his neck. Phil Clayton, Trevor Hendy, a lot of big names there. So a lot of work to go still, but a good mover, Dwayne Tyres. Yes, Dwayne Tyres has had top ten finishes here at Freshwater in the last two years. He's very key. Let's have a look though at Michael Porro's tips for today's round four. Yes, well I've actually got him in a separate colour, Dwayne, because I think he is a very big chance of winning. Hendy is clearly the favourite. In the uh, 10 short course races ever held, he's won nine of them, so he's going to be hard to beat. Jay Gilbert there as well. Then Thompson, Clint Robinson, Phil Clayton, Simon Martin and uh, Scott Reeves. All big chances, but everyone's a chance. And I think Dwayne has just pulled out down this little wave. He's working so hard and he's just dropped off the back. So Dwayne has been a little bit unlucky. There's a lot of guys on the next one, but Dwayne will have a little bit of a break. He's just laying down now trying to suck some air in. There is, there is nine, maybe ten guys on this next wave. And then even the way behind that, there's another six, so there's nothing in this. Have a look at the, the, the race going on here. Remember, there are five separate races today. In this race, six, I'm sorry, five will drop out. So all the guys on the way behind are in big trouble. And, you, and one of those is Michael King, who's wearing the yellow's leader's jersey. And Gordon, the, yellow's, uh, the yellow jersey so far this season hasn't been a good thing for anyone. It has been, it really has been the, the kiss of death and Michael King was worried about that. He said he's going to feel a bit of extra pressure coming into this race and it looks that way at the moment. He's back in the second pack. Well, Jay Gilbert's up there, the big guy Simon Martin is there and young Nathan Meyer. Uh, there's Trevor Handy back in about 10th but he's pretty comfortable. Kane Houston are coming through now. Now we're looking at about places 13 onwards. Brett Tyke, Guy Andrews as well back. There's Clint Robinson who's moved back. Steve Pullen and Craig Riddington is in fact right now in last position and in some trouble. So going to be an incredible race, Tim Bailey. Five to drop out. It could be anyone. Yeah, look at the look at the battle at the front here as they try and get over this little bit of slop. They're all onto their skis. It's not only on for young and old at the front, but it's desperation stakes at the back as the last of the boys pick their skis up and head out. Well, the thing about this, I've got to say, guys, um, in previous years, there's not been the sort of depth that we've got this year as we see great shots from the solo ski cam. The, uh, but, but today, even Trevor Hendy has really got a wriggle on, hasn't he? I mean, everyone out there is flying that you cannot afford to take it easy. Last year, the semi-finals, Trevor and myself especially found that, uh, and Guy Andrews, that, you know, you could go a little bit less than, than full pace, you could get through. These days, with the depth there now, you can't do that. And this first race, we've got the leader of the series who's in real trouble. He's back in the last five, and the only thing that's going to pull him up is Clint Robinson's right next to him. He can jump on Clint on the ski and maybe go past some people to qualify for the next round. And the other big news is that Scott Reeves, one of the fancies here, is in second last place at the moment. Well, there you are. So it's just that sort of a race. And uh, Grant Kenny, I expect Clint Robinson could well catch right up to this leading pack. Oh, well, there's no doubt of one thing in my mind, and that is that Clint Robinson will not be eliminated in this round. He, uh, he went out with a good aggressive style at the start of that swim league, knowing that he had his good board and, and sensational ski legs still to come, and he will certainly move through that pack and, as you say, could well finish probably in the top half of the field. A lot of interest, though, back in the uh, Michael King area. I see Craig Riddington back there. A lot of big names towards the back of this pack. Enormous depth, uh, flat water and a short ski leg. This is going to be a tight one. Yes, well, Michael King starting to work his way through from the back, and uh, also Scott Reeves is making up some ground after going to the left-hand side of the course. But down on the beach, Tim Bailey. Yes, with the world champion, the Commonwealth champion, and the swimmer of the year, you've got to be an Ironman, Kieran Perkins, with a schedule like that. Yeah, it keeps me fairly busy, I guess. It's nice to be able to uh, trip around and pick up stuff like that, though. What about these athletes? How do you rate them? How do you rate their swimming stroke, interestingly enough? 
Well, I wouldn't like to say too much about these guys because while I might be able to swim a little better than them, I probably couldn't do anything else like they did there. I guess, um, you know, for, for all-round athletes, their swimming isn't too bad. One of their legs of their races runs about the, the same uh, time as one of your races. Is, is there a, a comparison between training that they do and what you do? Well, I think that, you know, that we pretty much would put in similar amounts of work. Their, their training would be a little more varied and probably a little more exciting because of the, the board and the ski and the run as well. But, uh, you know, they, these guys are incredible endurance athletes to be able to get out there and uh, do so many races over such a short time. Kieran Perkins, thank you very much. Well, an absolutely fascinating race going on. There's a great shot from the chopper. You can see places. It's the last five guys there who are going to drop out. There is nothing in it with the last seven or eight or nine. It's going to be incredibly close, this finish. Heading in towards the, uh, the closing stages now, a wave coming up underneath. Nathan Meyer, he only qualified for today's race by winning the consolation final yesterday afternoon. He filled the last place, and he's out in front. He looks like he's got a great little wave out in front too. So Nathan Meyer will take this little one through to the beach, and he'll get through to the next round. Remember, there are $12,000 on each of these races, so the big question, do they go for the cash or try and hold themselves back just a little for the last race? Michael King, the series leader, is back in second last place at the moment, but a wave coming for him. Well, there's the, there's the situation. It looks like the guys just in front there on that first wave will be OK, but what a race we've got for the last six or seven places. So it's Nathan Meyer has hit the beach and he will be comfortable in first position. And it, Guy Andrews is back there as well. He's in trouble. There is Nathan Meyer who has hit the beach. So he's about the only one who can really take it a little bit comfortably. After that, Dwayne Thighs looks like he's just coming through to the beach. So we'll call all these through for you. Very important places. And there is, looks like Scott Thompson has done well. Scott Thompson in second place. Dwayne Thighs just coming through in third. Look at the fight going on now for the rest. Clint Robinson's come through to fourth. Trevor Hindy in fifth. Unbelievable. Robinson, Robinson's come from last through to fifth place. So there's the sprint. Meyer first, Crow has come through in second, then Scott Thompson in third position, Dwayne Thighs in fourth, Clint Robinson in fifth, Jay Gilbert right behind him in sixth position, Trevor Hendy in seventh, There's, there is uh, Drew Blacksford in eighth, Cowley ninth, tenth we've got 11th, 12th, Guy Andrews coming through, it looks like uh, Michael King is going to be close, he may not have qualified, he may not have qualified, Steve Pullen behind that, Kane Husner I think is out, Hayden Reese is out, and also last, I think it might be Brett Tyke is last. I think Michael King might have got 15th position and made it by one place. Yes, a narrow squeak there for Michael King. Let's go down to Tim Bailey. Nathan Meyer, a fantastic way to start the day. Yeah, thanks a lot. I just want to take it out hard, you know. Just happy with a good, good performance. What about tactics? I mean, there's a few races to go yet and staying there and not spending too much petrol. I mean, that's going to be the key, isn't it, at the end? Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, I was just taking the runs easy, putting a lot of work in after the last can and it paid off. Well, it paid off for the bank manager too. The big money to Nathan Meyer, race one. So there it is, the scene here at Freshwater and some big names bowing out. We'll be back with more action in a moment. It's definitely not easy. There's a lot of hard work that goes into it. Focus on your training and do it. It's a question of balance. I try to balance out all the things in my life. I can't go out and party every night, but I think once a week is healthy. Maybe even twice a week. Ironman champion Jonathan Crow demonstrates Stingo's. The Sting and Itch treatment from Park Davis. Stingo's quickly relieves the pain and reduces the inflammation of mosquito bites. Sandfly bites, wasp and bee stings, ants, nettles, and sea lice. Stingo's active ingredients help break down insect venoms into harmless substances and quickly and effectively relieves pain and itches. Stingo's. So the sting goes. Good afternoon, in RMA, Michael speaking. Hi, we've had a car accident. Um, what should I do? Is everyone okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. Send the necessity to inspect the damage and approve the quote. Well, so it won't take long. No, we should have you back on the road before you know it. Great. 
Call NRMA Insurance for H-E-L-P. You fear is not for you and me. Our world with a glare is a visual right. Polaroid glare foils eliminate glare and give maximum UV protection. So protect your eyes from the UV rays and get the look. That's, That's cool these days. Polaroid glare foils, spectacular frames without a glare in the world. You fear is not for you and me. Polaroid Glare Foils, available from these retailers. Diesel's long-awaited new studio album is finally here. This is Solid State Rhyme. Solid State Rhyme, 13 fresh tracks, including the smash sound of summer, all come together. Diesel, his brilliant new album, Solid State Rhyme, out now. When the cat's away. I promise I won't invite anybody over. The mice begin to play. I just want to keep flying. But when the mice try to impress. I would keep anything to learn how to fly. They find themselves out of their depth. Help, somebody help! Down here. While for Mitch and Stephanie. We just got to be able to keep our personal and our professional lives separate. It's a close encounter. Of the deja vu kind. On Baywatch, 7.30 tonight. It's cutthroat, it's sudden death, it's round four of the Uncle Toby Super Series. We're in the Stingo's recovery tent. They have just a ten minute break here and it really is uh, stamina sapping stuff here. Tim Bailey. Yeah, it is open for business down here in the medical tent. Uh, Crowey, a great second. Uh, I noticed you having a massage there. What's going on? Uh, well, I've got a lower back problem that I had to pull out of the manly race because of, so I've been having some work on it intensively over the last three weeks and um, just been keeping a check on it during today. There you go, the Iron Men and the Masseurs as busy as each other down here in the Stingo's medical tent. Yes, well, uh, he's pretty well qualified to talk about uh, back ailments. He's a qualified physiotherapist, Jonathan Crow from Wollongong, but uh, a very interesting first race there, Michael Porro. Well, I just can't believe the pace of that race. You know, as I said, in times gone by, as we can see, most of the competitors now, as Nathan Meyer, the winner of that first race, they're actually trying to rub the lactic acid out of him. As, as when they race hard, the lactic acid builds up in the muscles and that tends to cripple you. As we see Josh Blair, the youngest competitor in the field and they're in there and they're working very hard to get ready for the next race okay well let's now look at some more exciting action from this day at freshwater and it's the final of the surf boats it's the semi-final and our commentators are michael porra and also terry kennedy and freshwater beach looking an absolute picture for semi-final number one of the one hundred thousand dollar uncle toby surf boat series lining up in lane number one in the green boat with the white shirts the North Cottesloe Club, the sweep Jack Alice, Ian Clark, Patrick Hello. Walsh, Ben Rosa, and Craig Smith Gander. And the Collaroy crew you can see there with the red caps are in alley two. Steve Scott, the sweep, Brett Colston, Paul Daniel, Leon Pendergrast, and Josh Lyle. North Narrabeen in the red shirts, the sweep Don McNannis, Kendall Hayes, Norm Pounder, Darren Geros, and Adam Corrigan. And on their home beach, the freshwater crew, there's Bluey Meyer, the very famous sweep. Phil Sears, Grant Myers, which is Bluey's son, Julian Delaney and Mick Burke. Metropolitan Calandra in lane five. They won the opening race at the spit. The crew, Josh Hopkins, Tony Davis, Jason Haig, Denny Rowley and Len Fox. Only seconds away now from the start of semi-final number one, the Uncle okay, Toby Surfboat Series. Well, this should be very interesting because the tide is very low and they're going to have to do a lot of work to drag these boats out so it's going to take a lot of strength you see how those boats are further up the beach than they normally are it's a Le Mans start which means they have to run down get into their positions but grab the boats and drag them in now they're stuck in the soft sand they're really going to have to bend their backs to get just to get the boats into the water bit of momentum going now that's the North Narrabeen crew you can see closest to the camera once they get into deep enough water nice start there you can see all five crews doing quite well perhaps fresh water second from the top of the furthest behind at this stage and it probably looks like uh, Metropolitan Calanda getting off to a very nice start. Metropolitan Calanda really one of the form crews of the Uncle Toby surf boat series winning the opening round of the spit no southern crew have won one round of the Uncle Toby surf boat series heading out to the turning boys for the very first time and North Narrabeen look to be doing a good job there in lane number three Coming around the boys in first position, the red boat and the red shirts of North Narrabeen. They have been the form crew 
this weekend, no doubt. These crews have raced over five times already just to get to the semi-finals, and it's been testing conditions, Mick Parra. Well, it sure has. You can see they've just in front, and very nice little lead about boat, a boat length lead. Nothing in it between the other four crews, though. Dead level. All four crews coming to the beach locked together at the moment. North Cottesloe crew have done a magnificent job over the weekend to get to the semi-finals. It's the freshwater crew on their home beach at the moment, leading at the halfway mark this Uncle Toby semi-final number one of the surf boat series. Now they jump back into the boats, the crews, the four locked together. Collaroy doing a magnificent job along with North Narrabeen and Freshwater. Freshwater on their home beach getting the best of the first half of this race as they head back out to the turning boys for the final time, smashing through the very small break here at Freshwater. Metropolitan Calandra, the winners of round one, fading back into fifth position. So it looks like they couldn't miss out here in semi-final number one. And that is a bit of a shock because they were the winners of the first round and have been in very, very good form. Coming in towards the turn now, there is the Freshwater crew. You can see those turning boys just come into screen now. So Freshwater will turn first on their home beach. Everything goes OK. Back to the beach for them. They should qualify comfortably. Remember, only two make it through. Louis Myers now the sweep. Look at the work he's doing with that sweep boy at the back. The rest of the crew now back in perfect timing. And a very, very snappy turn there from the freshwater crew. But the others have moved right up on them. So North Narrabeen, who are next on the left, and then Collaroy on the third from the left. And then furthest right is North Cottesloe, who also aren't out of this. Only two can qualify. It's very, very close. Look at North Narrabeen in the centre, trying to get over the top of this little swell. Look at the, the Bowman pull. He's really trying hard to come over the top. If they can get over this, it will be a sprint finish. So it's going to be a sprint. I'd say it looks like Freshwater and North Narrabeen have the best end of the beach. They're going to have to take it through. The Bowman will jump out any second. It's going to be very close. Freshwater out of their boats first. Narrabeen out as well. It's going to be close. Freshwater, you can see, are up at the northern end. And they're sprinting towards the finish line. Freshwater are going to qualify. Very, very close between North Narrabeen and Collaroy. I'd say it's going to be North Narrabeen in second position. Yes, North Narrabeen will just qualify. A magnificent finish to semi-final number one. Freshwater in first position. North Narrabeen also advancing to the final in second position with Collaroy an unlucky third. It's a big sporting afternoon in Australia, but you'll see the best action here at Freshwater Beach. More of the surf boats a little later on, and we'll update you with that exciting first race in the Uncle Toby Super Series. This is a 10 News Update. Good afternoon, I'm Eddie Meyer. In the news tonight, Sydney's controversial third runway. Some confusion among Labor politicians over plans to relieve the situation by speeding up Badgerys Creek Airport. Federal Transport Minister Laurie Brereton says it will be fast-tracked with a highway link to Mascot. New South Wales Labor opposition leader Bob Carr says it will be ready by the end of 1997. But Federal Treasurer Ralph Willis says it's not a real solution and anyhow won't be operational before the early part of next century. More speculation about Liberal leader Alexander Downer's future. Former Democrats leader Don Chip says he has it on good authority Mr Downer will be replaced by John Howard within a fortnight. Overseas, Dr Jack Kevorkian is continuing his Right to Die campaign. Today he attended his 21st suicide at 72-year-old Michigan woman. All the details here on 10 at 5 o'clock. Got the Iron Man Tough Ferosa, now available with four speed automatic. That's who, that's who. The sale is on at Fleet's Ashfield. I've got top brand surf gear at unbelievable prices. Mana Venom 169 and free cover. Mana Cobra 159 and free cover. More a Gripper 199 free cover and the leash. Wetsuits, $69.90, bodyboard fins, $29.90, rash tops, $29.90, surf shirts, $15. bucks. and Pro Canex, $29.90. Ray Bans and Volleys at unbeatable prices. The sale is on now at Fleets, 154 Parramatta Road, Ashfield.
Blood on the fizz, so you can slam it down fast. Round four of the Uncle Toby Super Series. It's survival at freshwater, and we saw a riveting first race. And let's have a look at the official starting list and results of that first race. One of five here this afternoon, and Nathan Meyer picking up the major prize money in the opening event from Jonathan Crow, Scott Thompson, Dwayne Tyres, Clint Robinson, who was a clear last after the swim, Trevor Hendy in seventh spot, down to Simon Martin and Guy Andrews. And a close thing for a couple of these people, Near the back there, the series leader, Michael King, scraped in. Well, he was last, the last man to qualify. Last to qualify, so there you are. Hayden Reese is out. Brett Tyg, the Victorian champ, is also out. And Craig Riddington, just around the corner from his home beach, is also out. So five good guys are out, and uh, a couple of real near misses. Michael King would be very, very concerned about it. And Guy, I'm interested in your comments. Coming 16th and just, just qualifying. What does he do now psychologically to make sure that he gets himself back on track? He's got to turn around, Mick. He's got to realise that this is the start of another race, which they're just starting off now, and he's in equal put footing with anyone that was in the race before, even the first place guys. So he needs to get off the beach very well here, which he's doing in the middle. He's getting off the beach very fast next to Clint Robinson, and he's got to pull it all around and get through this next heat. Well, it's going to be very interesting. There's absolutely nothing in this. Of course, the uh, we have... Uh, 16 people left. We have five races, separate races today, and as we see Clint Robinson clearly out in front. Just look at the power of this young man, only 22 years of age, the Olympic gold medalist. And uh, as I said, five separate races. Big prize money on offer for those races. 70,000 all up for today. But for race two, as with all of them, there are 12,000 on each individual race. And the money keeps going up for each individual because there are less people in each race. So there's the money through to sixth there on race two and uh, right through down into a 16th position. But Michael King doing a good job, as Guy said, in second position and uh, trying to get onto Clint Robinson's wash. Now, Clint Robinson, Guy, he's going to need a bit of a lead because his swim is weak. It's the last leg of this particular race. He's going to need a gap. He's going to need something like 40 metres, I would think. 30 to 40 metres going to that swim leg. He's got the ski and the board coming up, and I would think he would be in time trial situation on the ski and the board, the fastest in the field, probably by about 20 seconds. So if he can he can get 20 seconds going to that last swim, he will get in and, and make sure he gets through to round three of this event today. Well, Terry Kennedy uh, out on the water there. They're going straight past you at the moment, and it's a real charge. Oh, Clint Robinson at the moment, he's doing it with ease. He's got about a five-metre lead over Michael King. Michael King must have nightmares about Freshwater Beach. He had his worst result, a 14th here last season. Now he just missed out on qualifying, nearly missed out on qualifying for this second race. He's not going to take any chances here. He's just picked up a major sponsor throughout the week. He wants to repay the sponsors with a victory here at Freshwater. And Philip Clayton right near the back, along with Joshua Blair. The young guys, Terry, in the, uh, in the field are right back. OK, having trouble getting through to Terry Kennedy. We'll get back there shortly. But look at Clint Robinson, who is really powering out in front. Now, there are the shots from Dwayne Thighs of Ski. He is paddling now on the solo ski cam. And look at Dwayne passing blokes on his left. You can see him really moving up along some of these guys. He was on a bit of a run there. And that was Nathan Meyer on over on his left-hand side. You can see the shots there. The camera can turn 360 degrees. We're now looking straight at Dwayne. And he's really got the pace going because Dwayne was back towards the back of the field. And look at Philip Clayton come right alongside Dwayne Thigh. So Clayton improving himself on the way in. Dwayne a little bit further back than he would like to be, but he's in great form and I'd expect to see him move through. Uh, Philip Clayton, the next two races with Ski first, is going to be the toughest for him. If he can get through the next two, Philip Clayton will be a real threat. But Clint Robinson has a great lead and there's a little wave underneath his boat. Michael King, you can see right there, 26 years of age, born in Gladstone in uh, Queensland from a Lulabar Surf Club, but based in, in Sydney. And he's in a clear second position at this stage. In fact, it looks like some of the other guys have caught right up next to him. So it's going to be very close. A nice little wave also coming through for the second mark. Clint Robinson has gone sideways. He's going to have to straighten that up, which he does. Now there you see Michael King on that second pack. Yes, uh, Michael King alongside him, Scott Reeves, and also Jonathan Crow and Trevor Hendy. Hendy uh, moving up towards uh, second place at the moment, about to leave his ski. So there Guy Andrews going very much to the left of the court. Uh, Tim Bailey, there really again is nothing in it between places second and right through to the back of the field. No, there isn't. There goes Trevor Hendy. He's in second and Scotty Reeves in third. Uh, Clint Robinson, forget about a 40 metre lead guy. I think basically he's got about 20 and the pack are charging. Okay, as Clint Robinson comes around, pass through the uh, Daihatsu Feroza, 
He's now going to go into the second leg, which is the board. He's very strong at that too. He's going to need a big lead. Scott Reeves, Jonathan Crow, Michael King, big Simon Martin, Guy Andrews is up there. There's Scott Thompson, Glenn Cowdery. Drew Blatchford's moved through with Jay Gilbert there. And there's Dwayne Thighs, who's back in about 11th or 12th position. He'd want to get moving. Now, the order here is board. I thought the order was board next, and Cliff Robertson has gone straight through. It must be swim. So swim is the next leg, and uh, they're going into the swim, and the board is last. So a bit of a mistake there from Clint Robinson. He thought the next uh, leg was board, and he did waste some time getting in. Confusion. Absolute confusion down here. Um, a few of the boys stopped propping, looking to pick the board up, but boys, it's the swim. So Clint Robinson lost five seconds down here, Mick, while he turned around and tried to work out what's next. Well, I think, Tim, the, uh, we'll hear from the race from the race referee Rod Taylor, but I think the next leg is certainly in all the official programs. The next leg was board. Perhaps they've all come through and just followed Clint Robinson. It will be very interesting to see what happens with this, but I'm sure, Grant Kenny, that there will be nothing, seeing all competitors have come right through. I don't think they'll do anything about it. I'm sure he'll just let the race run. Yeah, well, a very interesting situation, Mick. I'm, I'm pretty sure that board was, in fact, the next leg. And uh, as a general rule, the boards wouldn't have been on the beach had it not been the next leg. That runway would have been clear for the for the guys to run through for the swim. So that, to me, would indicate that board, in fact, was next. And uh, certainly it's been Clint Robinson's mistake and then uh, the rest of the field's willingness to follow that's caused this uh, rather dramatic uh, occurrence here and I really uh, will be very interested to see what the ruling would be. Almost impossible to disqualify the whole field I should think. Not a lot of purpose served in that but you know the guys really should be thinking more about what they're doing and not what the guys around them are doing and uh, they really should know the course better than this. So plenty of confusion there and it's Trevor Hendy stroke for stroke with Clint Robinson. We'll be back with more of this exciting action from Freshwater in a few moments. Toby's wheat bites. They're like nothing else. They're little squares of maximum nutrition toasted with honey for extra flavour that are a real taste sensation. What did he say? I don't know. And what's more, they won't go soggy in the bowl like other cereals. You Uncle Toby's wheat bites are. Guys. 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 When it comes to the crunch, it's the taste you can't resist. From Steven Spielberg, the screen's most memorable love story. Kiss me and fly! Holly Hunter, Richard Dreyfus, Roseanne's John Goodman, and Audrey Hepburn. Theirs was a special kind of love. I'm ready to say goodbye. 8.30 tonight, always. This is Reen Corbett, champion Iron Woman. She's putting on a coat of armour to help protect her from the sun's damaging rays. Solar Block 15 Plus gives her maximum protection. Now she can paddle, swim and run without a worry. This woman is equally well protected. But she's not going to paddle, swim or run anywhere. Solar block, the armour worn by iron women. You fear not for you and me. A world without glare is a visual right. Polaroid glare foil. Eliminate glare and give maximum UV protection. So protect your eyes from the UV rays and get the look. That's, That's cool, cool these days. Polaroid glare foils. Spectacular frames without a glare in the world. You fear not for you and me. Polaroid glare foils. Available from these retailers. OK, you've had the big ones all year on 100% Hits. Now we've got the absolute cream of the crop for you on the best of 100% Hits 94 with Cut and Move. Real to real. JX. Salt and pepper. Crystal waters. E70. Melody MC. And there's D Ream, Culture, Ab Fab, and more. You deserve the best, and now you got it. The best of 100% hits 94. So, Mum, Dad, you. Since when did you order two pizzas? Mm, 16.90. Who wouldn't order two? And besides, we wanted to eat with our son. Mum, I'm working. At least you're punctual. Oh, yeah, it's part of the job. So, uh, how's about a tip? A tip? Work hard. Be good to your mother. Two large pizzas, just $16.90 from Pizza Hut. 
Sydney's airport nightmare. You just can't get an honest answer. Political backtracking and possible solutions. Tuesday night, 10 News invites you to a public forum at Petersham Town Hall. Have your say. Be here at the Petersham Town Hall, 6.30 Tuesday. Yes, back here at Freshwater as they go around that first swim can and they head now at right angles to the second one before they come back into the beach. And Trevor Hendy just uh, sitting back in, in third spot at the moment. Scott Reeves up there and uh, also it's Simon Martin. OK, as you can see Simon Martin there in screen. He's, we're actually seeing him from the pictures from uh, Grant Kenny Ski, from Solo Ski Camp. So there is Martin heading across towards that last uh, turning mark and he's in a very good position out in front. And uh, Grant, very strong, very big young guy. And Scott Reeves, the other monster youngster, right behind him. Yeah, very powerful swim by these two fellows, particularly Simon Martin. He came through a little bit through that confusion. It was definitely Robinson and Hendy out front early, but they've come right through. Scott Reeves, as you mentioned, and also swimming enormously well with them is Guy Andrews. He's pulled right through the field. He's going past Scott Reeves as we speak. Trevor Hendy is dropping back in the field. And uh, Michael King is a big mover too on the left-hand side of the pack. So five more to drop out in this race. Let's now to get into uh, Tim Bailey. Official race starter, Rod Taylor, can you clear it up for us? Was it the board next or are they correct going for the swim? No, um, it's absolutely correct. They've gone for the swim leg next. The uh, following race is the one where it's ski, board, swim. Mr. Rules, thank you very much, Rod Taylor. OK, so, heading in towards the wave area now. So uh, we were confused and perhaps uh, the rest of them were in the right, uh, as Rod Taylor has said. So into the wave area now, and there is nothing in it. Grant, I guess you could say there might be only 15 metres from first to last. No one is safe. No, certainly not. There's a few little swells coming through. There was a couple of bigger ones when they were well out beyond that uh, wave area. But, um, you know, as it is now, Trevor Handy, say, for example, who's dropped back about 10 metres and into about 15th position, could just as easily pick up a wave and come through as I'm right alongside Jonathan Crow. He stood up a bit early, I would think. As a general rule, you shouldn't stand until your feet, or until your hands at least, at least touch the bottom and uh, certainly the guys that have stuck to that have uh, pulled a few more metres ahead but with the little likelihood of a, a small wave from behind as I speak one builds up behind Trevor Hendy this could make all the difference to the leaders okay you can see Scott Reeves standing Joshua Blair right beside him Jonathan Crow looks like he's dropped back a little bit uh, just then you can see him standing there waiting for a wave. Glenn Cowdery lifting his legs, the youngster from Maroubra. That's the thing they have to do. It hurts a lot, but you've got to do it. Simon Martin out of the water in first position. Let's call them as they come through. There's Scott Reeves in second. Looks like Glenn Cowdery coming in in third. Good effort. Guy Andrews in fourth. Drew Blatchford is there. Oh, there. The young Phil Clayton is there. Joshua Blair, Trevor Hendy, Scott Thompson. Michael King is in trouble again, as is Jonathan Crow, who was so well placed. So Corey Hutchings is back there in about second last. So it's going to be very, very interesting, Timmy Bailey. Some of these back markers are going to have to get a move on. Four to drop out. The tall timber then, the young tall fellows with the wading ability. With the tide coming in, the water's getting deeper. They can stand up and get across that water quickly. And you'll have a look at the two leaders there. They are big boys, and that's why they're there. Great wading. Yes, Jonathan Crow has four behind him at the moment, as Grant said. He stood up too early, too far out, and that cost him dearly, five or six places. Well, and Clint Robinson is also right in touch, just about to get onto his board. Jay Gilbert is dead last. Jay Gilbert, who uh, won the first, he's got a second and a third so far in the series, I'm sorry, is in dead last position, and that is a bit of a shock. Very hard, I think, it's going to be for him to qualify from here. Clint Robinson has got two to pass, but I think he will do that. So Dwayne Thighs... Jonathan Crow, who are running in about, uh, with only about four behind them, are going to have to look out because there are some fast people coming from behind. And Grant Kenny, there are two sort of distinct packs now breaking up uh, as we head out to sea. Yeah, I don't think there's anything much in that, Mick, except for the, uh, the beach position of the various guys. There was probably one or two faster fellas at either side, and the, the rest of the blokes have got together and formed up packs behind them. Simon Martin's out on his own and being hauled in further to the right of the field and uh, three guys working together here to try and close that gap. Guy Andrews well positioned, good to see him back up because he's competing today with a suspected broken foot. He's got some bones that are very badly damaged in his foot. He did that in the uh, elimination rounds yesterday, so it's great to see him up there in this second round of the survival today. Yes, uh, it's his three end toes, and uh, so that really was a blow for Grant Andrews. But let's have a better race update now. And this is the order as they came into the beach. Simon Martin, Scott Reeves and Glenn Cowdery in third spot. Then Guy Andrews, Phil Clayton and Drew Blatchford. 
Josh Blair, Trevor Hendy and Dwayne Tyres, very consistent. Scott Thompson, Michael King, Jonathan Crow. And then 13th through 15th, Corey Hutchins, Clint Robertson and Jay Gilbert. And remember, four drop out here, so it really is cutthroat. Well, that's right, four drop outs, so you've got to come into the top 12. And they're really, Terry Kennedy isn't very much between, even Jay Gilbert back in dead last position is not far off the pace. No, Jay Gill was about probably 20, 25 metres behind the first place getter at the moment, but he's really struggling at the moment, Jay Gill, but he struggled last week, two weeks ago at Manly. Now he's struggling again. Inter interesting to note that Simon Martin is very happy with this board he's got. For three years, they've been shaping the boards for him down in South Australia. Now he's got a perfect board. It flies, and he's been having some great results in this season. Well, they're heading towards the beach now. Philip Clayton on the right-hand side of the screen. This is his worst order in this race with Ski First, and he's gone right back up to the lead. So he'll be very, very happy with that. Look at the technique on the young man. Ike, eyes focused on the beach. Guy Andrews pulling right alongside him, and Andrews is really starting to look good today. He's the only person in history, uh, the history of the series ever to beat Trevor Hendy in a short course race. Of the ten races ever held, Hendy has won nine, and Guy Andrews has won one. So Guy Andrews has the pedigree here. Simon Martin has hit the lead, coming into the wave area now. And I, I think Trevor Hendy may not have got this wave. Michael King's trying to have, having to fight here. Trevor Hendy looking around for a wave. Simon Martin has got one in front, so he'll be able to take this through and he should be safe. Hendy has five behind him at the moment. He's looking a bit concerned. There's a wave coming now. Well, this is going to be a huge fight. Four to drop out. Michael King's going to be caught here as well. This could go anywhere. Simon Martin first to stand, Scott Reeves right next to him, so they'll be okay. Martin and Reeves through the solo drink station, they'll be okay. So it is Philip Clayton. King stumble, King stumble. So Philip Clayton is first around, right behind him Scott Reeves, then Guy Andrews, there's the three. Four places, Simon Martin in fourth, in fifth, Joshua Blair's come up, Glenn Cowdery in sixth, Blatchford seventh. Seventh, eighth, there's ninth. Hendy's come through for about ninth or tenth with Meyer. Eleventh place, Scott Thompson might have just got it. Jonathan Crow coming across. I think he's missed out, and I think almost certainly Michael King has gone. So King has not made it to the final 12 and has missed out, and Corey Hutchings has missed out as well. So, Tim Bailey, exciting stuff. Absolutely. Phil Clayton, do you know any other speed but flat out? Oh. The way I'm feeling, I didn't feel too flat out then. It was pretty hard. I had a really bad ski leg at the start and did my work and got through and finally caught him in the swim. The pace is phenomenal, all the boys talking about it. Is there strategy there or is everyone just going as hard as they can? I think this has got to be the fastest lot of races I've ever done and I'm positive everyone's just going flat out. OK, Philip Clayton wins one and his bank manager's happy too. Race three. Yes, well, there are some big names who won't be continuing, Michael Porra. Well, Jonathan Crow's out and Michael King is out, Corey Hutchings out and, and Jay Gilbert, who's running second overall in the series in adjusted points, is also out of the competition. Yes, Scott Thompson just scraping through, so it really is uh, very cutthroat here at Freshwater. We'll be back with more in a few moments. Good afternoon, I'm Matthew White with another Summer of Sport update. England has made a double breakthrough in the first Ashes test in Brisbane. Paceman Darren Goff and spinner Phil Tufnell dismissing the Australian openers. Robert Allenby is the new leader on the final day of the Australian Golf Open in Sydney. He's a shot in front of Brett Ogle. Earlier, former winner Wayne Riley was disqualified for using a damaged putter. South Africa continues to be the surprise performer at the World Hockey Cup in Sydney. In their first international tournament, they've held one-time hockey giants India to a two-all draw. And earlier, they'd held Olympic champions Germany to a draw. And Reen Corbett has won round four of the Devondale Iron Women series at Freshwater Beach. 13-year-old Queenslander Linda Halfwig finished a surprise second. I'll be back in an hour with another Summer of Sport update. In a moment, back to the Ironman. Australia's leading athletes know that the best cereals are made by Uncle Toby's. 
you're in the right place at the right time for the one and only Right Price Sale. Yeah, the Right Price Sale continues. Original artist compact discs, all under $20 at the Right Price Sale. Check out these titles. Hoodoo Gurus, Girlfriends, Southern Sons, Boom Crash Opera, Black Box, Village People, Snap, Taylor Dane, Bruce Hornsby, Meatloaf, Steppenwolf, Lou Reed, John English, Billy Ocean, Neil Diamond. Plus truckloads more at the Right Price Sale. Compact discs, all under $20. Now that's the Right Price. The sale is on at Fleet's Ashfield. I've got top brand surf gear at unbelievable prices. Mana Venom 169 and free cover. Mana Cobra 159 and free cover. Moray Gripper 199 free cover and the leash. Wetsuits 69.90, bodyboard fins 29.90, rash tops 29.90, surf shirts 15 bucks. Wimbledon Pro Canics 29.90. Ray bands and volleys at unbeatable prices. The sale is on now at Fleet's 154 Parramatta Road, Ashfield. These Buzz batteries last just as long as Duracell or Energizer alkaline batteries, only they cost less. So if you want to buy your kids the best and save, just look for me on this yellow poster. Buzz batteries, make no mistake. <laughs> Great tasting Uncle Toby's Light Start is a good source of calcium and iron. That's what makes it the best. Indian summer conditions here at beautiful freshwater for round four of the Uncle Toby Super Series. We're in the Stinko's recovery tent there and Trevor Hendy, he had a pretty tough race there, just getting through, but down in the tent, Jim Bailey. Actually snuck outside the tent, everybody is talking about Guy Andrews, plates of meat, his feet. Guy, is it broken? Uh, I don't know, at this stage it's, it's a bit of swelling and a bit of bruising, uh, you know, it's, it's getting sore after each race, but during the race it's not so bad. Now this beach, not a happy hunting ground really, you broke another toe here two years ago. Yeah, well, a few years back in a run swim run, yeah, I whacked my foot up against the guy running in the water in front of me and broke it in two places. So it's the same foot, not much luck, so, you know, I should be able to tough it out okay. Have a look at that, the grin of Guy Andrews, third in the last race with a broken foot. Reminds me a bit of myself in my younger days. Gordon. Uh, a bit of foot in mouth there, I think, uh, Timmy. But there's the starting list now as we move to race three, which is Ski Board Swim. Yes, and you can see Philip Clayton has the highest amount of uh, prize money, 2,600. Scott Reeves, Guy Andrews, Simon Martin, Josh Blair, Glenn Cowdery, the big surprise here today from Maroubra, Drew, Drew Blatchford, Dwayne Thighs, Clint Robinson still in there, Nathan Meyer, Trevor Hendy qualifying second last, and Jonathan Crow, Michael King have both gone out. Corey Hutchings, the New Zealand champ, and Jay Gilbert, one of the top runners in the series. So four real big guns have gone out of the race at this stage. We're down to the final 12. We have had we have five races here today. We've already had two of them, three races to go. It really is going to get interesting from here on in. Michael King, of course, has gone out. He finished 14th, the same as he finished last year. Guy Leach, it's a bit of a surprise to see him go out, but not a sprinter. It's very important in these conditions today, this type of races, to be very fast off the beach. He's the classic makeup of an endurance athlete, isn't he? He's got no top end speed, but he can go all day, and that's why he wins and does well, so well in the endurance races. I was watching the last leg there on the uh, on the craft, and he actually got cut out a bit. He looked like he was even with a couple of other guys, got shouldered a little bit, and fell down, and that was the difference between getting through and not. Yes, well, uh, he said that he was absolutely destroyed after the manly run, that six kilometre run in the soft sand. It took him three days to recover from that, and although he's lightened off with his training, it obviously hasn't been enough. And so Michael King, the series leader, is out. And the jinx continues on the series leaders as Jay Gilbert, who led after two rounds, is also out. Yes, that's exactly right. Whoever has worn that leader's jersey has had an absolute shock of the next week around when they've worn the shirt. So it's happened again for the fourth time in a row today. And uh, we saw some great pictures just a moment ago of big Scott Reeves, the 21-year-old from North Burley. Here he is just coming into a camera there, closest to the camera, in that green cap with the two white stripes, only 21 years of age, right next to Clint Robinson. Now, that is a great position to be in because if he can get right on the wash of Clint Robinson and get dragged along, then it's going to be a great thing for him. That is Scott Reeves right there. So now the starter, Rod Taylor, has to get them in a perfect line, wait for a wave to go past so it's nice and flat. Everyone right across the beach here has to get an even start because otherwise it's not fair. He's now called starter's hands. He's seen a break. You see them edge forward. Now they're straight through onto the ski. Notice the way that they jump with both feet straight through. And what a great start for Philip Clayton right there. The weakest ski paddler perhaps in the field and certainly his weakest leg. He'll be delighted with that start. Guy Leach, great start from him right alongside on the other side of the course. Um, we can see 
two of the uh, the great ski paddles, of course, in Clint Robinson and Scott Rees, but what a great start for, Cl for young uh, Clayton. He really needed to have a good start there because he's on the furthest side of the can there, so he needs to get up to a good start and get past some of the guys on the inside. Scott Rees will be thinking, all I've got to do here right now is get on Clint Robinson's wash and get around this ski leg with a minimum amount of fuss. But, but yeah, Phil Clayton did a great job. He jumped, he must have hit his feet right in the foot block and really got a good start and powered away right from the beginning. Well, when we're in the ad break, uh, Guy Lich asked me who I thought might get there at the sort of halfway mark of this race, who I thought might win, and I said, well, maybe Philip Clayton is starting to look good. If he can get through this round here, because Ski's his weakest leg, if he can get through this, the next two races, the last two start with Ball, which he's very good on, and he's got to be a very big chance. Guy, your tip. Well, it's very hard. I mean, I've never seen Trevor have to struggle to get through as he has today. He, he was sec he just got through with, with, with one, one person spare behind him in that last race. But, you know, Trevor's got so much experience. And from that last, that last race, there's the 12 in there at the moment, there's seven out of the 12 who have never done survival before. So that's something like 70% of the field do not know what they're going through at the moment. And Trevor's done it all before. So I'll lean towards Trevor, but just just. Well, Terry Kennedy, uh, they're just going past you, this leading trio at the moment, and it's Clint Robinson ahead of Scott Reeves and also Simon Martin. And Scotty Reeves and Simon Martin, they're gritting their teeth, trying desperately to hang on to Clint Robinson. It's not an easy thing to do. Guy Andrews is getting a nice little run out the back here, along with Trevor Hendy, doing some great surf skill work here. Scotty Thompson's also up there, Philip Clayton, but struggling back in the field there. Dwayne Ty's just trying desperately to get up into that top that top six at the moment but Scotty Reeves and Simon Martin many a time throughout this season they've been one and two or two and three and they've really been shadowing each other throughout the series and Guy Andrews also in a very good position in fourth you can just see him there in that red ski in the middle of the screen that red ski in fourth position there he is right there alongside Simon Martin this perhaps is Guy's weakest leg he's very strong on the swimming board so he'll be delighted with where he is and uh, has moved on a beautiful little run there. But Clint Robinson is going for the beach now. There's a little swell underneath his ski. If he can hold this one through, he'll have a tremendous lead. Look at the power of this guy. He's just dropped off the back of that one, and there's another wave now coming through underneath. Just a big, long stroke. He's so powerful. Now he's going to need a big lead. We're into the ski leg of this third race today. Board next and swim after that. Now they've cut across to try and head back towards the, um, the turning mark on where for the run before they go into the next board followed by a swim and these four have broken away a little bit from the rest nothing in it for the rest of the places but Clint Robinson needs a wave he's got a little wave here that's going to take him through now he'll rest he'll try and suck as much breath in as he possibly can and take this one through to the beach and Dwayne Tyres has only three behind him at the moment so he's struggling well there's the Feroza lap time three minutes 11 seconds so that's how long the ski leg took They'll go into the run now, then the board, then the swim. I don't think Robinson's got enough lead. He's going to struggle from here. He needed a bigger lead. It's going to be interesting, Tim Bailey, to see whether he can hang on because he's used to having a bigger lead than this after the ski. He goes past me, probably 15 or 20 metres in front. He did, didn't did get a wave. Mickey had to paddle all the way in, as did most of the boys. There's waves out there now, but it's a bit late for Clint Robinson, who's got to put his head down and do the hard work in the soft sand. Well, Scott Thompson has moved into third position. And he is on adjusted points. Scott Thompson is, in fact, the leader of the series with a first and a second, having a spectacular year, Scott Thompson from North Bondi. OK, there's Simon Martin now coming through in second, in, um, in third. There's Trevor Hendy's site. Scott Thompson and Guy Andrews. Then Dwayne Thigh, so he's moved up into sixth. Right behind him is Glenn Cowdery in seventh. Drew Blatchford there in eighth. Back in ninth. Yes, we can see um, the rest of the competitors coming through. Nothing in it between ninth, tenth, eleventh and twelfth place. So it's going to be very close as Scott Reeves moves through into the water. So here are the current placings then as Scott Reeves starts to chase Clint Robinson. Simon Martin in third place, trailing Clint by 11 seconds. Trevor Hendy, very solid in fourth spot. Scotty Thompson doing a grand job. Guy Andrews in sixth place. Dwayne Tyres, well, he has four behind him at the moment because a couple of have passed him on the beach. Drew Blatchford, Glenn Cowdery, another four to drop out here. We're down to the last 12. It's Phil Clayton, Josh Blair and Nathan Meyer. Again, great excitement here at Freshwater. We'll be back with a resumption of the coverage shortly.
he's got the Iron Man Tough Ferosa, now available with four-speed automatic. Dihatsu, that's who. It's hip, it's happening. It just got a lot hotter in here. It's the show that goes all the way. Do you want me to have sex with my wife on stage? No. Move over, Oprah, for the talk show with a difference. What are you doing tonight? <laughs> Beginning midday Monday, the all-new Ricky Lake Show on 10. Of all the airlines in the world, only one has received the industry's highest award for safety twice. Because we've always believed that the services you don't see are just as important as those you do. Okay, you've had the big ones all year on 100% Hits. Now we've got the absolute cream of the crop for you on the best of 100% Hits 94 with Cut and Move. E70. D Ring. Eternal. Culture. Ab Fab. And the Salt and Pepper, JX, Crystal Waters, and more. You deserve the best, and now you've got it. The best of 100% Hits 1994. Out now. So, Mum, Dad, you. Since when did you order two pizzas? Mmm, 1690. Who wouldn't order two? And besides, we wanted to eat with our son. Mum, I'm working. At least you're punctual. Oh, yeah, it's part of the job. So, uh, how's about a tip? A tip? Work hard. Be good to your mother. Two large pizzas, just 1690 from Pizza Hut. A spellbinding premiere. Everybody's up to something. Some mysteries were never meant to be solved. Some questions were never meant to be asked. Did anyone ever tell you that? Curiosity kills. Monday. Uncle Toby's in association with Solo Lemon Crush and Daihatsu Rosa, the tough four-wheel drive. Hope you're enjoying the Uncle Toby Super Series. Round four of the Uncle Toby Super Series, it's survival. And it's Clint Robinson, still doing a very good job, but chasing very hard there, Scott Reeves, and also Trevor Hendy. And Grant Kenny paddling right alongside Trevor Hendy. He's also in, a, he's in a, a quite a comfortable position, Grant, because he has a bit of a break on the rest of the field. Yeah, I don't think he's all that concerned just at this point about where he is. He's uh, just sitting in sixth position, and it's quite a comfortable buffer. Uh, at least for this point in the race, back to the, the rest of the competitors. But uh, a few guys coming past now, which surprises me a little bit. Simon Martin's got a great space happening. Uh, Scott Thompson's setting a good pace there. And these guys started this board leg off next to Trevor. He's now content, though, to sit back on Guy Andrews' rear wash, have a little bit of a rest, and I'm sure will turn on the uh, power as they make their way back towards the beach. And Terry Kennedy, I think Clint Robinson is going to need more than this. He's going to have to really get a move on in the last part of this board if he wants to have enough lead to hang on in the swim. Mickey has done a magnificent job on the board. Let's give him some credit. He's still got about a 25 metre lead over his nearest rival there. I can tell you who's in big trouble back in the pack. Philip Clayton is coming second last at the moment. He's got to pick up another four places to make sure he gets through. But Dwayne Tice is also having a super board leg back in the pack. So there is Philip Clayton. You can see him just coming around that turning point now. So he has got a lot of work to do. His best leg is swim. I don't know what's happened to him in the board. He's normally a very good board paddler, but you're right, he is a long way back, so he's going to have to get a move on. He could well do it in the swim. Clint Robinson now going for a wave underneath the, uh, underneath the board. There's a swell there. It's virtually nothing, and look at him push hard for it. He's going to try and come down to the top of this one. If he can, it'll be a nice lead. He'll need this. Geez, had to work hard. There's not much behind, a little wave. Oh, and he's just dropped off the back, so he's been unlucky again. He's going to have to paddle right through to the beach. Andrews has zoomed through, Mick. Andrews has come through as well. And look at this, Andrews has come through in second position. Clint Robinson has had to go right through to the beach. In fact, that's Scott Reeves in second position. 
And Clint Robinson, that's not what he needed to go into this next leg. He needed to have a bit of a rest as well to get the pulse down. He's had to work right through and he will be in lots of pain. So it's Clint Robinson first through the solo drink station. In second place, big Scott Reeves just coming into the beach now, just coming through that drink station as well. There's Scott Reeves now in second position. Now it gets very close. Remember, four to drop out in this third race. Scott Thompson, Guy Andrews, Trevor Hendy in third, fourth and fifth. So there they go around those leaders. The other guys now just coming up into the drink station, sixth place. Philip Clayton just coming through there with Drew Blatchford and Dwayne Thighs has also got a lot of work to do at this stage. Yes, Dwayne has only just a few behind him at the moment. Uh, three, in fact. And Philip Clayton also struggling back towards the rear. Josh Blair has about five or six behind him. So here is the situation. Clint Robinson with an advantage over Scott Reeves of six seconds. Scott Thompson in third place. Guy Andrews fourth. Trevor Hendy in fifth. Simon Martin sixth. Glenn Cowdery doing a good job in seventh from Josh Blair. Phil Clayton, Drew Blatchford, Dwayne Tyres and Nathan Meyer. Let's go down to Tim Bailey. So there's uh, Grant Kenny alongside Clint Robinson and a big ask here for Clint. Grant, how's he looking? Well, the wolves are breathing down his neck. He's, uh, he was a little bit sluggish running into the water and he was almost seemed reluctant to start swimming and put his head down. And he's really, uh, <laughs> to use an old phrase, dragging his heels a little bit, but that's in fact exactly what he's doing. His legs are sinking down and the pack is closing very fast from behind. In fact, I'm gonna have to move over a little bit because there's that many guys coming through. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's going to be very hard, Grant, for uh, for Clint to hang in there. He's he's got obviously not a strong swimmer. He did also didn't get a wave in the board, so he would be hurting a hell of a lot. All yeah, right, come in, Tim Bailey. Out. Okay, with me, Linda Halfwig, 13 years old in Grade Eight, second in the Devondale Survival today. Terrific performance. Thank you very much. Hey, what do the kids at school think of you? I mean, I was flat out learning how to read in Grade Eight, and there you are mixing it with the elite female athletes of this country. Oh, they all call me Iron Woman, and <laughs> but most of them are pretty good. Fantastic. When did you start? As a nipper or earlier? Uh, as I was early, actually, because my brothers would come through the ranks, and the, my oldest brother was really good in sprints. Was... All right, there she is, the princess of the surf, a true water baby, Linda Halfwig, 13 years old. Back to you guys. Yes, and talking of babies, uh, her big disappointment is that she can't look after a two-year-old, Andrew High from Caloundra, who is a disabled baby, but she'll be going back to look after Andrew after the Uncle Toby's and the Devondale series. So they're coming around now, the turning boys, and Clint Robinson has gone back to second last position. So he was hurting very badly, and he won't qualify here unless he's very, very lucky. But Simon Martin, out in front, is doing a great job. Does look fantastic, Terry Kennedy. Oh, does he? What, these two guys, once again, one and two, Simon Martin and big Scotty Reeves. Give Scott Reeves some credit. He's had a second in this series, a 14th, and then fought back magnificently at Manly with a sixth. He's never done a survival test before, but he looks like he knows what it's all about at the moment. He's in second position. Someone in big, big trouble, Dwayne Tyres, is coming second last in this field at the moment. He doesn't look as though he's going to get through. Thanks very much, uh, Terry Kennedy. Well, let's now have the first of Michael Porra's Daihatsu Ferodo surf tips, and this is really where the sandbank comes into play. Well, towards the end of a swim leg, when the competitors hit around about waist depth water, they actually stop swimming and stand up. Now, the job is to get out of the water very, very quickly. But if they try and run normally, it's very hard and they really don't make any progress. So they've got to employ what's called wading. And that's where they lift their legs right up to the side and out of the water. Now, it's very, very difficult. It really hurts a lot. But if you want to get out of the water quickly, it really is the only way. Well, these guys are just coming into that wave area now. In fact, within probably the next 20 to 30 seconds, they will stand. And it could well be that wading that can win this race. Look at Philip Clayton, closest to Grant Kenny's ski camera. He was back in last position, and he's come right through Grant Kenny. I was actually going to tip him as they rounded that last can to be the first one to the beach for this swim. Mickey's picked up about 20 to 30 metres. As, we, as he swam out on the other side, he yelled out to me again. He's making a big habit of doing that, but he seems to have an abundance of energy. He's swimming enormously strong. He's just having a little look under his arm there from time to time. He's keeping an eye out for whatever little wave might come through and give him some sort of a chance to pick up the leaders. 
I'm sure that's not on his mind right now. What he'd be worried about more so is what might bring the tail enders through. And as I speak, there is a swell building up out the back for the likes of Dwayne Tyres. OK, there's a wave building. Some of these guys are going to have to lift their legs, as we just talked about in that surf tip. They're going to have to lift their legs. And Trevor Handy waiting for a wave there. He'll take this and he'll be safe. Now, look at big Simon Martin lifting those legs. He's done it. That's going to what will be the thing that'll get him out of the water, and he's done it. Simon Martin will get through. The others waiting for a wave. Josh Blair has come through, the youngest competitor in the field, only 17 years of age. Well done, Josh Blair has come through in second, so he'll get through. But there's a big fight for the rest of the places. Have a look at this for close. It's very, very close. Trevor looks like he's safe. And Glenn Cowdery like, might make it again. Let's see them across the line. A very close finish. We can see there Simon Martin has crossed with Josh Blair. In third position is Guy Andrews. He's made it. Scott Thompson's made it fourth. There's Scott Rees in fifth. Trevor Hendy has made it in sixth. Let's just see the rest of those places. In seventh, Glenn Cowdery has made it. And Philip Clayton has come through in eighth position. So they're the eight that will qualify through. Drew Blatchford has dropped out. And Dwayne Tyres has also dropped out. Tim Bailey. With me, Josh Blair, fantastic. The short course right up your alley. Yeah, thanks, Tim. Yeah, I've just been hanging in there really good. I've, um, my skiing board have been really good today. And when swim wasn't first, then I was swimming really good. Don't you hate cheeky interviews when you can hardly suck the breath in? We'll leave you to it, mate. A great performance. Josh Blair. Yes, a terrific competitor, the teenager, Josh Blair. He's uh, turned in some great performances in the Uncle Toby Super Series. And uh, obviously the, the, the fast twitch muscle fibre coming to the fore there, Mick. Well, that's for sure. Some of these, you can see the young guys, they're very fast, very big guys, and very good over these short courses. So that's the scene here. We've had some gripping events so far. Trevor Hendy is certainly feeling the heat and the pace. Back with more from Freshwater shortly. Only one has received the industry's highest award for safety, twice. Because we've always believed that the services you don't see are just as important as those you do. So, Mum, Dad, you, since when did you order two pizzas? Mm, 1690, who wouldn't order two? And besides, we wanted to eat with our son. Well, I'm working. At least you're punctual. Oh, yeah, it's part of the job. So, uh, how's about a tip? A tip? Work hard. Be good to your mother. Two large pizzas, just $16.90 from Pizza Hut. There's more than one way to describe furniture from Design World. Elegant. Superb, stunning, luxurious, desirable. And now, direct from the importer, it is affordable. Design World, Parramatta Road, Granville. Furniture from around the world that won't cost you the earth. Hi, I'm Russell Crowe. Join me Wednesday night at 7.30 for the 1994 Nescafe Big break. Let's get that big break. Diesel's long awaited new studio album is finally here. This is Solid State Rhyme. Solid State Rhyme. 13 fresh tracks, including the smash sound of summer, all come together. Diesel, his brilliant new album, Solid State Rhyme, out now. These Buzz batteries last just as long as Duracell or Energizer alkaline batteries, only they cost less. So if you want to buy your kids the best and save, just look for me on this yellow poster. Buzz batteries, make no mistake. Hold on to your funny bones. The best of the best comedy on television is coming your way. His buttocks are sublime. Remember this. I think I see a uh, nipple. Oh, my God! 
And what about this? King of the county. Lord of the manor. Queen of the castle. And this. He poked me! There was cleavage in the area. Who would have thought? Celeste. No. Bovary. Oh. That a show about nothing. These fish are dying. Would ever become something this big. Great. Beginning right. Tuesday, the best of Seinfeld. Freshwater is the birthplace of surfboard riding in Australia. Sitting atop on MacKillop Headland is the famous Hawaiian surfer, Duke Kahanamoku. He demonstrated to throngs of people here at Freshwater 80 years ago on this particular skill, and afterwards members of the Freshwater Surf Life Saving Club acquired boards and became proficient in this new sport of surfboard riding. Let's now go to the Stingo's recovery tent, and down there is Tim Bailey. I'm proud to call this beach home, Gordon, a wonderful neck of the woods. With me, Dr Louise Tullow. 30-plus temperatures, flat water, lots of heat. What are the main problems confronting our boys today? Yeah, well, as you say, flat water, so not many many problems with trauma on the on the um, big, on the craft legs, but main pro major problems with dehydration and overheating, especially with this format, because the guys tend not to, they're concentrating on the next race. They tend not to drink much, you know, in between races, so they yeah they get dehydrated. So basically, your instructions: drink, drink, drink. Tell them to drink, drink, drink. Yeah. Okay, follow me for a second. We'll go into the Stingo's medical recovery tent. Um, what's going on here, Phil? Clayton, you snuck through there by the skin of your teeth in eighth spot. Um, the massage. Oh, it's pretty hard out there. It's really flat and you really got to work a lot, so I thought I might get a quick rub down. Does it help? Does it help relax the muscles? I mean, you have been going 100%. There's been very little strategy in these races. Everybody's just been going to win. Yeah, it's really good. You get to relax the muscles a real lot. They're really good at like loosening them up a lot and you um. Out there it is, flat out, it's amazing. It's, I've never raced this fast for that many races, one after another in my life. The bad news, Philip, there's another one on in under five minutes. Philip Clayton snuck through that one. Will he be there next time? We hope so. Back to you guys. Yes, uh, Tim, he's a great talent, Phil Clayton. Another one of these fast twitch muscle fibre people who really can explode in these conditions. But also today we've seen some terrific action in the Uncle Toby surfboat series. Let's now join Mick Porra and Terry Kennedy. Second semi-final. Superb conditions for semi-final number two of the $100,000 Uncle Toby Surfboat Series. Four crews lining up. Let's check them out. North Cronulla Gold in lane number one. Steve Swain, Barry Shutrum, Mark Featherston, Peter Armstrong and Vaughan Meldrum. Alexander Headlands in alley number two. And they're swept by Jamie McKinless, Ken Seacombe, Joel Ladigan, Mark Salmon and Mike Gibbon in the bow. Manly, the defending Uncle Toby's champions, line up in lane number three. Matt Klein in the sweep, Stephen Todd, Paul Piriner, Peter Small and Matthew Heaton. And Bulleye up from the south coast in New South Wales, swept by Robbie Mayer, Paul Jones, Fred Smeaton, Steve Bolch and Mark Davies. A Le Mans start for these four crews in semi-final okay. number two. The gun okay. just about to go. Manly are the defending Uncle Toby surfboat champions, and they also lead the current series, although they have not won a race. Consistency sees Manly lead the series. We are now underway. A Le Mans start, a good 50-metre run. The crews have down to their boats before they've got to drag it across a shallow sandbank and then head out to sea through a very small break, Mick Porra. You can see the North Cronulla crew closest to the camera were last to their boat, so they'll have to have a very snappy change. You can see them on the bottom of your screen. They've already fallen about a boat length behind. They were third at the Australian Championships earlier this year, so they're one of the favoured crews, and it is the Alexander Headlands crew who have won the last two rounds first in their boats. But look at the recovery there made by North Cronulla Gold. They were cleanest into the boat, got a bit of momentum going, and they've now moved up into about equal first position with Manley, who are the current series leaders. Coming in towards those turning boys, the sweeps now really have to earn their money. This is where the crews have to turn in perfect unison. It looks now, it looks like it may well be Bulleye on the left-hand side of the screen who have moved right alongside Manley, but there's nothing in it. Look at the four crews. Manley perhaps, oh, a third of a length in front. In fact, there's nothing in it. All four crews are dead even. It's perhaps the closest term that I've seen in the two years history of this Uncle Toby Surfboat Challenge. Absolutely nothing in it. Look now at those little swells behind them, the northeast swells. 
They're going to now try and pick them up. The speed does pick up on the way home because they get that little bit of assistance. So Manly haven't probably been at their very peak form over this weekend, but they're doing a magnificent job in semi-final number two. North Cronulla Gold also doing a great job. They're out in front at the moment. Alexandra Headlands, who won round two at Newcastle and round three at Manly. The form crew just dropping back into third position now as North Cronulla Gold go into the lead. North Cronulla Gold crew swept by Steve Swain as they come in towards the beach. They're in dead water now. The other crew's now coming over a wave. The bowman for North Cronulla, that is Vaughan Meldrum. He is out and heading towards that turning mark. You can see it's about knee depth of water. He's got to wade through. There are the other crew members all out as well, so there is nothing in it. Perhaps only Bulleye on the right-hand side of the screen lagging about 20 metres behind. There you can see the North Cronulla bowman, Vaughan Meldrum, who will be first back in. Very hard to do this. In fact, he's, he has been overtaken, so he's not the fastest runner in this field. The Manly crew have had a magnificent turn at the halfway mark of semi-final number two. They are now opened up about a two-boat length lead over Alexandra Headlands and North Cronulla Gold. The crew from Alexandra Headlands, very proud of their record so far in season 1994-95, and why not? They won round two at Newcastle and were also victorious at round three at Manly. Now they're looking just to get through to the final here at Freshwater Beach and doing a great job. Three turn at the one time at the moment. Manly just in front of North Cronulla Gold. Alexandra Headlands now trying to make their mark. There's about two lengths separating the first three crews, if that. Now look at the swell in the middle for Alexandra Headlands. They're trying to push over the top of this one, as is Manly. They're really trying to come over it. Look at the bowman putting in the work. He's lifting right out of his seat. He's pushing that hard. They've been on the top of this swell. They've come over it. Alexandra Headlands have come from behind and they'll win this. Now up and running, the bowman for Alexandra Headlands. Mick Gibbon, up he goes. They're going to win this race by the look of it. Also, great battle for second. Manly going hard for North Cronulla goal, but it'll be Manly who'll get through in second position. Yes, the uh, North Cronulla competitor, a little slow to get out of the boat. So Alexander Headlands crosses in first place, Manly in second, and they will qualify comfortably for the final. North Cronulla goal in third and Bulleye in fourth position. The Uncle Toby Surfboat Final later in our big coverage here from Freshwater Beach in Sydney. Now, here's your chance to win a great holiday up to the Twin Waters Resort on the Sunshine Coast. Win the ultimate surfing holiday with Guy Leach and Trevor Hendy in the Uncle Toby Super Series Super Win. Three couples will enjoy six nights luxury accommodation at Novotel Twin Water Resort, including return airfares. To enter, ring one of the following 0055 numbers to place your boat for the most spectacular moment within the Uncle Toby Super Series history. Moment number one, 1994, and a big swell at Freshwater puts Trevor Hendy into a spin. Hendy's lost his board. I've never seen that, and look at him surfing on it! Moment number two, with top spot in his grasp, Jonathan Crow gets winged by the Portsea Express. And Crow has gone under as well, oh, unbelievable! Moment number three, in energy sapping 37 degree temperatures, rookie Michael King turned up the heat to blitz the field and claim an amazing victory. So it's King across in first position. The action doesn't end there. Get your Iron Man sticker and Triple M saver card from inside Uncle Toby's Super Series cereal packs and tune to Triple M for weekly discounts on fashion items, movies, CDs and more. Join in the Uncle Toby's Super Series Super Win. Yes, and our new triathlete, Leachy, will be riding his bike up there and he'll meet you at the Sunshine Coast. It's Wipeout, Trevor Hendy, Jonathan Crow, Big Sunday, or Red Hot, Michael King. There are the numbers. Take your opportunity to win that great prize. We'll be back to wrap up race three of the Uncle Toby Super Series. We're now down to the last eight. We'll have more action on the other side of this break. Good afternoon, I'm Sandra Sully. In the news tonight, Qantas and Ansett gearing up for tomorrow's 24-hour strike by airport refuelers. The TWU is going ahead with the strike in support of a 12% pay rise, despite warnings it faces hefty fines. John Howard says reports he'll replace Alexander Downer as leader within two weeks is news to him. The leadership change was mooted by former Democrats leader Don Chip, who says he's got it on good advice. Melbourne police are investigating an explosion in a phone box which injured a woman last night. They say an explosive device had been placed on the shelf of the booth. Overseas, Bosnian Serbs continue their advance on the Muslim enclave of Bihać, ignoring a UN declared safety zone. The UN has condemned the attack but has taken no action to stop it. 
And what does Santa want for Christmas? A little excitement in his life. All the day's top stories in both news and sport in the 5 o'clock news here on 10. Got the Iron Man Tough for Rosa, now available with four speed automatic. Dihatsu, that's good. If it's bad today, I don't want to know. Just don't pass me the piece of paper. Heart disease isn't just a man's problem, it kills virtually the same percentage of women. Today, Denise Drysdale is putting her heart to the test through MBF's Know Your Heart program. <sighs> He's got warm hands. She's not counting on a good result. I eat too many fatty foods and I don't exercise. I just don't exercise. I hate it. Denise's fitness level was average, but excellent blood pressure. Got 115 on 75. Low cholesterol at 4.5 and a healthy liver function were quite unexpected. <laughs> Thank Why you, does that surprise God. you? Hallelujah! <laughs> I feel fabulous! <laughs> Everyone thinks, oh, I don't want to do it, I'll find out something. But now that I've done this, I will exercise more because I feel better for knowing. It's time more women got to know their hearts. For inquiries or bookings, phone the MBF Know Your Heart program on 1800 804 888. There have been some very unusual events staged here at Freshwater Beach in surf carnivals, catching the greasy pig, reel winding, tug of war, push ball matches and prizes for the man with the brownest hide. But now we're down to the serious end, the business end. We're down to the last eight. And this fourth race is Bort Swim Ski. Yes, and there is the money won in the last race. Joshua Blair, 3,930. Simon Martin made it through, as did Guy Andrews, Scott Thompson, Scott Reeves. Trevor Hendy in six and does look like he's hurting a little bit, but I think he's still got some left. Glenn Cowdery, what a shock that is. A great effort. And Philip Clayton. Drew Blatchford, the big shock. Dwayne Thizer, I thought might have a chance of winning today, has gone out, as has Nathan Meyer and Clint Robinson, who struggled in that last swim. So the order for this race, board, swim, ski. We're down to the final eight, and you can see the pace as they head in. Trevor Hendy, third from the left, is very fast off the beach, as always. And look at the pace. It is extraordinarily quick. Phil Clayton there on the right with the red cap, or the maroon cap with that white star. I think he's a big chance of winning today. Board and swimmer his best, and ski his worst. But the last two races do not have ski first, so that will suit him. He's sitting right next to Trevor Hendy, where I'm sure he'd also like to be. Notice Trevor has dropped back straight away. He said, I'm not going to do the work here. I'm going to let someone else do, do that work. So let's have a look at the prize money at stake here. We're down to the final eight competitors after starting the day with 21. First place here, nearly $3,000. Third place, nearly $2,000. Then fourth, $1,750. Down to sixth place, $1,400. And then seventh and eighth places will pick up over a grand. Well, four of these eight competitors now left came through the trial earlier this year and do not have a contract in this series. So what a sensational performance. Glenn Cowdery is in there. He hasn't finished in the top 15 yet, and he's now down to the final eight. What an effort from the young Maroubra guy. Philip Clayton, his highest place ever, is seventh. He's only got to beat one here to beat that. And young Josh Blair, second from the left there with that blue cap with the red star. Only 17 years of age. He's still at school. And Josh Blair right up there with them, Trevor Hendy. He's already, I mean, it's Terry Kennedy. He already has his best place ever. There is an occasions where I'd like to be Trevor Hendy, I can tell you. But uh, at the moment, Phil Clayton is out in front and doing it in great style. You've got to give him plenty of credit. He will get out there and do the hard work. He doesn't mind being the rabbit. Maybe it's not great tactics, but it's plenty of guts and determination. As I mentioned, he was a spectator here 12 months ago. I think he's enjoying himself here. Yes, and uh, also, Grant Kenny, uh, I noticed there that Trevor got caught on the can coming round. Yeah, a bit of bad luck from a few of the guys there. Simon Martin, I think, was the one that came out worst off from that little uh, <laughs> encounter with the can. They all seem to bunch up. Hendy uh, got the nose of his board stuck under the rope, and then the rest of the guys, of course, just impacted straight up behind him. So 
it, it really uh, slowed the whole field down a little bit and opened it up a little bit for the leaders. Yeah, so what happened? We just saw a, a nice uh, slow motion replay. Trevor Hendy, in fact, went too tight on that, so uh, very rare to see Trevor Hendy make a mistake, but he did go too tight. We are seeing fantastic pictures now of Philip Clayton. There is a wave coming up underneath him, and if Clayton can pull onto this one, he'll have a tremendous lead. I don't think he will, but they are coming into the impact zone now. Look at the beautiful technique on this young man. Only 18 years of age. He won eight of the 12 junior Ironman races that he went in last year. Without doubt, one of the best, if not the best, along with Kane Houston, a junior Ironman in the country last year. First year in the seniors, and what a job he's doing. Now, he's been a touch unlucky. He wouldn't want to stop. Look at the rest of them jostling for positions. Guy Andrews sprinting, Trevor Hendy as well. There's a little wave here. Clayton will get this little one in front, but they're all going to be right behind him. Very close, it looks like. Scott Reeves and Simon Martin will drop out of this at the back, so they're in a bit of trouble. And you can see, as I said earlier, only four to qualify. Nothing in it from first right back. Philip Clayton just coming over this little one, but he's had to work hard, not got much of a breather. They're going to go through the run now and then go into the swim. So it's Philip Clayton first to hit the beach. So Scott Thompson still doing so well in second. Trevor Hendy, Joshua Blair and Guy Andrews. One of these to drop out and two behind. In fact, two of these to drop out. Only four will go through to, this, uh, to the final race, the final four. And isn't he doing well? Timmy Bailey doesn't young uh, Clayton look fantastic. He feels the need for speed and he feels the need to lead. He loves being out the front, Mick. He's a great bloke. He's really down to earth. He's focused on what he has to do. He enjoys his Sundays on the sand here. No matter how gruelling, no matter how much he has to survive, he's having a good time and he's leading a couple of the big guns. Yes, Tim, well, let's look at the current placings since they came onto the beach. And Phil Clayton in first spot from Scotty Thompson a few seconds away. Trevor Hendy in third place from Josh Blair, Guy Andrews, Glenn Cowdery and Scott Reeves and Simon Martin, the two big guys in a bit of trouble and they still haven't hit the water. No, they're 18 and 19 seconds behind, but they are very good ski paddlers and they're very fit. So I would expect this field could well clo up, close up. Now, Grant Kenny, you would think that young Philip Clayton, the best swimmer in the field, could well open up a gap here. Oh, I'm sure he will, Mick. I think uh, there's a great contrast. The legs and the length of uh, Scott Thompson and Trevor Hendy enabling them still to porpoises as uh, Phil Clayton has his head down and is swimming. I'm convinced that he will be probably 10 metres plus clear of these competitors as they enter the wave area. It will then just be a matter of waiting to see whether or not he actually can get something small to carry him through to the beach because he will need all the lead he can get going into the final ski leg. And the 30-year-old Scott Thompson from North Bondi doing such a wonderful job. We haven't talked about him too much today, but as this race goes on, he is going to get better and better. That's right. That's right, Mick. He's a, he's a tough competitor, Scotty. This is his best year he's ever had. And he is a very good swimmer. This year in the pool, he's been doing some great times I've heard of. And what he needs to do now is get on Phil's feet and get himself pulled along the field. And as you can see right here, he's doing that, so he's doing a great job. Yeah, Scotty Thompson said that he made the mistake of overtraining last season in the winter lead-up. But he certainly hasn't done it this time. He's lightened up. He's very fresh here today, and he's in second spot at the moment here at Freshwater. which brings together their recorded history. Here's the evidence. Two brand new tracks, Don't Need Mercy and Turn It On, plus 16 classic Angels cuts. The Angels Evidence, out Monday, November 28th. At Qantas, we're making changes to bring you even better service across Australia. New schedules to make more flights and seats available at the times you want to fly. New world-class flight clubs. Fresher, more interesting meals. And a whole new look inside our aircraft. All designed to make you feel at home whenever you fly. I needed a break from study. I thought, well, pretty reserved is the way to go. 
Yeah, it was great fun. The fun and the excitement was all there, the adventure, and you know, I learned a lot of your skills. I didn't want to just defer for a year. I wanted to do something worthwhile. 12 months full pay sets you up. Financial security is good. You can take a 12 month break in the army on full pay while you decide what to do with your life. Having money when you're studying, that's, that's the best part. The idea of a tax-free scholarship after you finish was, was a great incentive for me. Then while you continue to serve part-time, be eligible for tax-free pay and bonuses and qualify for a $4,600 tax-free scholarship to further your education. Well, it gave me a lot more self-confidence and now I'm more motivated at university. And the other things like meeting new friends and learning other skills. A lot of fun. It's great, a lot of fun. It's been great, I've had a good time. Take a 12-month break and give yourself an education opportunity with an edge. The Army Ready Reserve Scheme. Call 13 19 01. You wanted it. Nice hooters. You got it. Hey. The Moose is back by popular demand. According to Unsolved Mysteries, it's already happened. It's comedy. Push. A little on the wild side. Oh. It's drama. Chris is a priest. I answered Anne to back a Rolling Stone. Slightly north of normal. Oh, cram it, you tall, skinny, male twerp. Ordinary people. I've wrecked three pairs of underwear just dreaming about you. No kidding. An extraordinary place. Is there anything you'd like to add? No. Northern Exposure returns Tuesday. Yes, we're watching the fourth race of survival. It's board, swim, ski. That's the order. They're on the swim leg at the moment. Trevor Hendy is missing out at the moment. He's back in um, fifth spot, and only four go through to the final. So it's a terrific situation here. Terry Kennedy. It certainly is. It's not too terrific at the moment for Simon Martin and Scotty Reeves. The two big guys, they were worried before this event started about the recovery time, the 10 minutes in between races, whether their big frames could recover in time to get back out there and cope with this heat. A very hot day here at Freshwater. But what about Scotty Thompson? This time last year, he finished 27th in this event. He's in the top eight now. He certainly looks like he's going to be in the top four. He could even win it, his second win of the entire series. Well, if you have just joined us, we are in the middle of the survival race here at Freshwater Beach. We have already had three races. We're coming towards the closing stages of the fourth race. Young Philip Clayton in the centre of your screen is leading this one. Only four will go through. There are eight in this race. Only four will go through to the final ones. There's Scott Thompson in second position. And the big news, that is, as we speak, Trevor Hendy is in fifth and has to at least go past one to be able to qualify. This is his worst leg, the swim. Ski is still to come. But Scott Thompson doing a fantastic job. And the longer this race goes on, he's a very, very fit guy. And uh, he is going to get better as it goes on. He likes the heat. More, the more it's like an endurance event, the better he goes. And I think he's going to be a big chance. And uh, Grant, not, many, not much happening in the way of swells. Trevor Hendy, a little swell coming through now. He may pick this one up. Yeah, Mick, I think the water where the guys are swimming at the moment is probably a little bit deep for anybody to pick anything of it. Uh, it really, you know, I think it's going to be swim just about all the way to the beach. Hendy stands. This may be his chance if it's shallow enough there. Swims hard but misses out. They've all looked back over their shoulder and seen that there's nothing there for them. Another one a bit further out the back now. Andrews has seen it and is moving across to take advantage of where it will break. But I don't think that anyone's going to get too much of an advantage of it. Phil Clayton up and running as is Scott Thompson. And they're going to need, as I said, all the lead they can get. Well, Scott Thompson and Philip Clayton just coming through the solo drink station. So there they are, first and second. And isn't Thompson looking fantastic? Third position just coming through now is Josh Blair. And Trevor Hendy is in fourth, so he has passed that one. So Trevor Hendy now in fourth. His ski leg is coming up next, so I think Trevor... No, Guy Andrews is right in front of him, so there's a real dogfight going on. The Feroza elapsed time in this race. Eight minutes, 31 seconds. Josh Blair, the youngest competitor in third. Good on you, Josh. He's going fantastically well. And what a fight going on for first. Fourth, I'm sorry. Guy Andrews and Trevor Hendy, only one can qualify there. And there's Cowdery as well, is also not out of this yet. Coming down towards, towards the ski, there are the top five guys. There's only 15 se seconds separating them, but these two guys are going to have a great fight towards the uh, finish line. Got to say, Leachy, that Trevor, a very good ski paddler, but he does start to look a little bit tired. He does, but Joshua Blair isn't renowned for his ski paddling. I think that he, he knows that, and he's going to try to at least cover him and make sure he gets into the four. With, the, with there being no waves coming in, it just means that there, there shouldn't be any upsets, and if he can get past him, he should be right for the last race. Yes, well, Tim Bailey, uh, Scott Reeves, and also Simon Martin bringing up the rear, but you couldn't really write them off at this stage. They're still in it. No, they've been neck and neck the whole way. They've run a bit of a team race, actually. It's talking to the two boys. They've swum together. They are now going to have to paddle their hearts out together to get back into this. They are 20 metres off the other pack. Well, 
Grant Kenny, I think the uh, the leaders are lucky that Reeves and uh, and Simon Martin are perhaps out of this um, further back because they've they've hit their skis and they are really flying. I tell you what, Simon Martin is absolutely flying back in uh, second last position, but I think he's given too much away. Yeah, well, Simon and Scott have been probably the two dominant ski paddlers, other than of course Clint Robinson so far today. And I watched with interest Simon in particular was very powerful in that last swim leg. He was way back after the board, but he did put in a good swim. He had a bit of bad luck uh, in terms of waves and hasn't really finished that far up the field. But the uh, question is, can they make up the distance? And I think the answer is no. Well, it is Josh Blair and Scott Thompson. They're spread apart, but there it is. You can see that's not Scott Thompson. Scott Thompson just up to the out of screen. You can just see the tail of his uh, ski there in the top right-hand corner. That's Scott. Philip Clayton there right in the centre. There's Scott now. So he's in front and really going for it towards that uh, turning can. Perhaps only about 30 metres before he turns. And Thompson just coming around that boy now. He's got his nose in front. The 30-year-old. What a year he's having, Terry Kennedy. He certainly is, Mick Gass. This is his 11th year of competing in Ironman contests. Had his first victory at the Spit in the very first round of this summer. What a tremendous job he is doing. He and his wife do have a baby on the way. Maybe he's trying to get that extra prize money to, to cover all those extra costs. Talk about a veteran and a pupil at it at the moment. Scotty Thompson, 30 years of age, and Phil Clayton in second place, 18 years of age. Last time Scotty Thompson took on a youngster, he gave him a beating. Yes, and uh, Scotty also came through to win those three gold medals in the World Masters Games, which was a great boost for him. He then won uh, at Surfers Paradise, and maybe a little down on form at Newcastle, but bounced back at Manly, and he's doing a grand job here at Freshwater in round four. Well, the Feroza elapsed time, 11 minutes and 27 seconds so far in this race. Coming back into what, at the closing stages now, you can see one, two, three, four, five in the screen there, and only four can qualify. Scott Thompson, I think, should be safe. He's also a very strong runner. He should be able to get a wave out in front, but it's going to be very close for the rest of the places. Scott Thompson is the world veterans Ironman champion, the world over 30 Ironman champion, and he's also the world 400 meter swimming veteran champion. So there he is, the, as I said, a veteran, and he's out in front doing his best Really, 12 years older he is than the guy on your screen right there as Trevor Hendy moves right alongside Philip Clayton. And look at the difference in the size between these two men. On the left-hand side, Philip Clayton and Trevor, who perhaps weighs three to four stone more than Philip Clayton. Clayton around 11 stone, Hendy up around 14. So they're on a little wave now, it looks like. And they, in fact, there's four of them on a wave. There's four of them on this, and this is going to take them through. And it'll be a sprint to the finish, although those are the four that will qualify. So. They don't have to really kill themselves here. The four of them will be able to take this right through and they're going to be able to comfortably qualify. So very fortunate for them to be able to save themselves for the next race. These are the four that will qualify. Philip Clayton on the right-hand side of your screen there, hitting the beach. There's no need for them to sprint. They're all going to qualify, but there is still big money on offer. Philip Clayton up first. Notice Trevor Henney's decision. The money doesn't worry him. He wants to win the race overall. So a big sprint going on between Scott Thompson and Philip Clayton for first and second. There is $12,000 on offer in this race, and Scott Thompson will take the lion's share in first position. Philip Clayton coming through in second. Trevor Hendy and Guy Andrews, the two experienced guys, couldn't care less about the money. They want to win this race overall, so they're saving themselves. And that, Kyle Leach, I reckon is fascinating stuff and really gives you an insight as to the way they think. Well, that's right. I mean, the, the other guys, Guy Andrews and Trevor Hendy have won this event before, and I think their bank balance might be a little bit higher than the other boys, and they're thinking, well, the money's not that important. Let's get the points and let's get the win up in the next race. So Josh Blair, then Simon Martin coming in sixth, and Glenn Cowdery in seventh, and Scott Reeves in eighth place. Let's go down to Tim Bailey. Scotty Thompson, and then there were four. I bet right now you don't feel like going in again. Oh, I'll tell you the truth, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm an endurance specialist, so... I mean, I'm hoping I'm getting better and better as it goes on, so it's just a matter of staying in touch now. And I mean, I'm down to the last four. It's the first I've been in this type of event before, so I'm, I'm just over the moon. Fantastic. Winning form, good form. Scotty Thompson lining up a big win at the Survival. Well, the bad news is for Scotty, if he keeps going, he might end up being the leader of the series again. And we know what's happened to all the leaders. Back with more after the break. Good afternoon, I'm Matthew White with another Summer of Sport update. Greg Ogle and Robert Allenby are fighting out the closing stages of the Australian Golf Open at Royal Sydney. Greg Norman's bid ending when he overshot the 13th green. 
Australia is building a commanding lead in the first Ashes test after not making England follow on. Australia had led by 259 on the first innings and have continued their dominance in the second. Openers Mark Taylor and Michael Slater putting on another century partnership. 13-year-old Queenslander Linda Halfwig is the talk of the Devondale Iron Women series after finishing second to Reen Corbett in round four at Freshwater Beach. Australian sisters Emma and Claire Carney have starred at the World Triathlon Championship. Emma winning the senior women's title and Claire the junior women's title. Australia's Brad Bevan has finished second in the men's. Toyota driver Neil Bates has won the Australian Rally Championship for the second time. He's finished second behind the Mitsubishi of Ross Dunkerton in the Canberra Rally to secure the title. The only disappointment for Bates though, he's missed out on the $10,000 bonus if he could have won his home event. India has scored in the last 30 seconds to earn a two-all draw with South Africa at the World Hockey Cup in Sydney. And Korea has scored four times in the last nine minutes in thrashing Belgium. We will have all full details in the news at five and in sports tonight after the late news. Australia's leading athletes know that the best cereals are made by Uncle Toby's. Look out for the 1995 Yellow Pages on your doorstep soon. Now at Design World, you can afford the finest. A collection of the most desirable furniture to suit all tastes and lifestyles. These stunning designs have been tastefully collected and are available direct from the importer, Design World. If you're looking for quality furniture, see this magnificent showroom now. Design World, Parramatta Road, Granville. Furniture from around the world that won't cost you the earth. Diesel, his brilliant new album, Solid State Rhyme, out now. The Lighting Warehouse has moved to Parramatta Road next to McDonald's Auburn. That's where you can buy a light and get one free. Hundreds of lights and fans have been selected, so hurry to the Lighting Warehouse next to McDonald's Auburn or at Erina, where you can buy a light and get one free. <laughs> Uncle Toby Sports Plus is the perfect cereal for active people because it combines complex carbohydrates, calcium and iron. That's what makes it the best. Here we go. Yes, uh, we're well, down to the last four now here at Freshwater in Survival. And Trevor Hendy has competed in ten sprint events in the Uncle Toby series and he has won nine of them. Guy Andrews, the only man to break that sequence, and that was two years ago here at Freshwater. Tim Bailey in the Stingo's tent. Actually, we've stepped outside. Trev just wanted to have a swim and get things right, get a bit of water in. The old fox, you're here at the business end again. Yeah, I guess um, I've been on a bit of a high this week and feeling pretty good, and there's no way I was going to go too early today, and the pressure's off now. I'm in the final four, and uh, just get out there and have a good race, but I've got a smile on my face anyway. What about the pace, Trev? Has it surprised you? I mean, you're in a position to make a good judgment. These young guns go hard, don't they? Oh, they certainly do. And, uh, you know, Joshua Blair, Phil Clayton, Nathan Meyer today have been outstanding. And uh, every single race, the pace has really been hot. And uh, it's going to show, you know, it's uh, four very tired guys in this last round. OK, thanks, Trev. All the best. Will the old fox get to the winner's circle? I think he just might. Yes, and what's that fox in the water there too who won at Newcastle? In fact, Scott Thompson, Trevor Hendy and Guy Andrews have won the three rounds so far. The only man in the final who hasn't won a round is Phil Clayton. So let's see if he can come through and do it. Now the final of the Uncle Toby's surfboat race here at Freshwater. Commentators Michael Porra and Terry Kennedy. A magic afternoon here at the beautiful Freshwater Beach for the $100,000 final, the Uncle Toby Surfboat Series. Four crews lining up in the final. Here's how they line up. A lane one in the red shirts and the red boat. The crew from Alexandra Headlands. Jamie McKinless to sweep. Ken second. Joel Ladigan. Second, Bauman, Mark Salmon and McGibbon. 
on their home beach is the freshwater crew in alley number two. Bluey Myers is the sweep. Phil Sears, Grant Myers, which is Bluey's son, Julian Delaney and Mick Burke. In the white shirt and the red boat, the crew from Narrabeen, the sweep. Don McManus, Kendall Hayes, Norm Pounder, Darren Geros and Adam Corrigan. And the current Uncle Toby's Super Series champions, the boat series champions are Manly. And they are Matt Clymer, Stephen Todd, Paul Pirina, Peter Small and Matt Heaton. Perfect conditions here. Oh, Surfboat oh, rowing, the final. These crews have rowed six times over the entire weekend just to get to this four boat final. We are now underway. The crews to watch, the Manly crew, the defending Uncle Toby surfboat champions, also North Narrabeen, and the local crew here. Freshwater have been in outstanding form over the weekend, Mick. Alexander Headland's closest to the camera, and they're carrying the Uncle Toby surfboat cam. So we're going to see some sensational pictures from within the boat, and it does look like Alex Headland's do have a slight lead at this stage only small waves to negotiate but it is man it, it is north narrowbin i'm sorry at this stage who have dropped slightly back but uh, really nothing in it it does look on the right hand side of your screen which is the northern end the manly crew who all weekend and so far through this series have been the best with their work in and out of the boat and on the transitions there's the freshwater crew swept by bluey meyer on their home beach and wouldn't the local crowd love to see them win there's the shots now from inside the Alexander Headlands boat. We can see there the stroke, and that is Ken Seacombe. He's 26 years of age. His job is to set the pace for the boat, for the crew. And you can see there now the bowman looking back down on the rest of the crew. And that is, um, I'm sorry, that is Mike Gibbon, who is the bowman for the Alexander Headlands crew. They have won the last two races straight in this series. But as you can see, there is nothing in this. If anything, it's the freshwater crew at the moment who have just taken about a half a boat length lead. They're about halfway out to the turning boins, which are about 400 metres out to sea at the moment. The freshwater crew in the blue shirts and the white boat, they're working extremely hard. You can see them on camera now. They've been in good form over the entire weekend. The Alexandra Headland crew, they've been the form boat of the whole series, winning round two in Newcastle and also backing up with a second victory in round Round three at Manly. Well, perfect rowing conditions. The wind has died off, so the water is very smooth. We see some great shots there of the Alexander Headlands crew. They're coming in towards the turning boys now. This is where the sweep, who stands at the back of the boat, really has to perform. So the outside men have to turn the boys. You can see those the uh, turning boys there. It is fresh water first in, and closest to the camera, Alexander Headlands. Now notice the way that the inside rowers stop rowing and chock their oars. The outside rowers quicken the pace, and the sweep uses the sweep oar at the back to steer the boat around. Now it was, it was, it looked like. Um, uh, Alexander Headlands who put a tremendous turn and have pulled right alongside the freshwater crew. So they're in first and second and nothing in it for third and fourth between Manly and North Narrabeen, perhaps one length behind. It's still anybody's race at the moment. There you have it on screen at the moment. Alexandra Headlands, winners in round two and round three. They're looking for victory number three in the Uncle Toby Surfboat Series. $100,000 up for grabs over this season in 94 and 95. What a tremendous battle it's been. Alexandra Headlands, in form, they're the favourites here, but the Manly Boat Crew can never be discounted. And also Freshwater on their home beach, doing a great job. And now North Narrabeen, Mick, trying to come into this race. Well, they sure are. So the three crews almost alongside and, and Manly, who have been affected, I think, by a crew change in the last few weeks. But Alexander Headlands on the bottom of your screen. Remember, they have to go into the beach, turn the boat around while one boat member runs up and around a turning mark and then back into the boat and do the same course again. Great shots again from the surf cam. You can see them really lifting their pace. They're looking like they're trying to pull over the top of a little run now, but they've just dropped off the back and fresh water. Fresh water have been able to pull away right next to them. So it's fresh water and the wave has doubled up. It's a perfect little wave for Bluey Meyer and his crew and look at the way they've got that boat so beautifully balanced. They don't want to lean left or right because that makes the boat go to the to tip either side which stops the run. And we can see that Alexander Headlands have had to row right through to the beach. That'll take a little more out. Their bowman has had to jump out. Mick Gibbon is first out and we can see the also the freshwater bowman, that's Mick Burke, is out of the boat as well. So a split up and there's nothing in it for third and fourth. Now is where they've really got to get the transition area going. They've got to get the skill and the technique working for them. So a contrasting tactics here at the moment. The freshwater, Mick Burke up and around in first position. It's Alexandra Headlands in second position. Alex left their boat further out to sea. Freshwater came further into shore. So maybe Alex could have an advantage here as they head back out. But a lot of hard work for Mick Gibbon. Well, that's, it's very hard for the bowman because he doesn't get a break. The others have got about 40 seconds.
seconds rest. You can see Mick had to jump back into the seat, and he's really his pulse would be up around 180, 190 beats a minute, which is within about 5% of maximum. The other guys have been able to get it lower, so they're going to have to take over the work. So the other three rowers will actually have to do more of the work. In other words, they'll have to pull a little harder on their oar and perhaps give the bowman a bit of a break. But Freshwater has moved through into first, and on the northern end of the course, Manly have come back into it. They've done it all day, Manly. They are very, very good in these transitions. They do the most work in terms of their transitions, and they've moved back into second position on that changeover. The Freshwater crew got out and got into clean water very quickly. Alexandra Headlands got hit by a small wave just close into shore, and that's allowed Manly have done great work in that transition, as Mick said, to get out and get up into second placing, now in third placing North Narrabeen, and it looks like Alexandra Headlands, winners around two and three, have dropped back into fourth position, just a bit of bad luck, close into shore. Well, you can see there the white boat of uh, the freshwater crew standing at the back is Bluey Meyer, who is in fact 59 years of age. There he is, almost 60 years of age. Think about what a lot of our viewers might be doing at 60 years of age. This is one of the most dangerous sports in a big surf that you'll ever do. And uh, he's up there at, that, at the age of almost 60, still doing it. So experienced. And they are a very experienced crew. They've had a lot of victories behind them. His son, Louis Meyer's son, is also in the crew, Grant Myers, and he is 33 years of age. That's him there, second from the back of the boat in the second stroke position. That's Bluey's son. So they've got to uh, put, each, put up with each other at home and then get into training together night and day in preparation for this race. Mick, it's certainly in the blood. Bluey Myers, he's been rowing for some 42 years. So virtually his entire life, Bluey Myers has been in a surf boat. Well, Manly just coming around in second position, and they're very close. You can see here there could be a clash of oars here. Oh, there is a clash of oars just slightly between between uh, Freshwater and Alexander Headlands just coming around now. Nice clean turn from Alexander Headlands. The sweep there doing a very good job, Jamie McKinless. He's only a young sweep, 31 years of age, one of the youngest sweeps around. He's done a very good job to get them around. But Freshwater have about a couple of lengths lead. I think it looks like only Manly and Matt Clymer they're urging the crew on. It may only be Manly that can challenge them. A very important crew change for the Manly lineup. They have a new man in the boat for this round. And just trying to settle back down, they've done a tremendous job even to make the final here. At the moment, it is Freshwater making a great go. There's a wave building up out the back. Can someone crack this wave and try and come through on Freshwater? Bluey Myers doing a magnificent job for Freshwater. Well, you can see that they're heading straight. The, the three crews on the left of the screen are heading straight in. And the uh, crew from Alexander Headlands has gone way over to the south to try and pick up a wave. And I don't think it's going to work for them. I think they've dropped back into, th into almost uh, fourth position. But it looks like Freshwater, if they can get a wave, Manly coming right through on them. There's Manly now moved up to perhaps a length behind. There's a little wave under the Freshwater crew. It's underneath them now. They're trying to come over the top. Manly's also on a little wave as well. They're going to have to come over the top of this to win this one because Manly are on a little wave behind. So it's going to be close. I think Alex have just come. They're still on the top of this little swell and they've come over the top of it. They have come over the top of this little wave. So that should be enough for the freshwater crew to take this one out. They're waiting until they get into shallow water. The bowman will then jump out and sprint up the beach to the finish line. So any second now, Mick Burke is out. So freshwater out of the boat and up towards the finish line with the bowman Mick Burke. It looks like Manly out in second position. So Manly, Matt Heaton is out and he will take over second position. In third position will be the North Narrabeen crew and in fourth position, Alexander Headlands. Well, what a perfect result it is. The big crowd here at Freshwater Beach giving the local boat crew a rousing reception as Mick Burke came up. So it's Freshwater in first position. Manly in second position. They've been the most consistent team all summer so far. They should hold the series lead. North Narrabeen third, Alexander Headlands a bit unlucky in fourth position. The Sunshine Coast domination in the first three rounds finally broken. More surf boat action from Trig Island Beach in Western Australia in two weeks' time. After the break, the Super Series final, Hendy, Thompson, Andrews and Clayton. Maybe this time... You don't look half bad, toots. Rosie's bitten off. What's your name? Don't you recognize me? More than she can do. Come on, fat boy, let's take it outside. An hilarious Halloween episode. Roseanne, 7 o'clock weeknights on 10. Of all the airlines in the world, only one has received the industry's highest award for safety twice. Because we've always believed that the services you don't see are just as important as those you do. Whiz, you know everyone.
Everyone loves a bargain. Especially good looking blokes like us, Block. Haynes embroidered t shirt. With Grandpa Cole slashed our 15 bucks at, at Lowe's. Lowe's. King G Tropical Shorts, not 25 bucks, 19.99. Save 10 bucks on the trousers, slash to 29.99. Ta-da! Watch and wear trousers, 20 bucks. Save another 10 bucks on these genuine rags, slash to 15 bucks. Don't forget Haynes T-shirts. 15 bucks at Lowe's. So much for so little. Churchill. Alley. The greatest. <laughs> the sale is on at Fleet's Ashfield. I've got top brand surf gear at unbelievable prices. Mana Venom, 169 and free cover. Mana Cobra, 159 and free cover. More a Gripper, 199, free cover and the leash. Wetsuits, 69.90. Bodyboard fins, 29.90. Rash tops, 29.90. Surf shirts, 15 bucks. Rimmel and Pro Canix, 29.90. Ray Bans and Volleys at unbeatable prices. The sale is on now at Fleets, 154 Parramatta Road, Ashfield. This is a message to all the mums and dads of the world, from the kids of the world. You'll have much more fun if you do your Christmas shopping at World for Kids. There are lots and lots and lots and lots of toys to choose from. They're all at the lowest prices in town. You can save my money. I'll buy more toys. Merry Christmas. Ah, oh, great. So you got one of them flybys cards then, Dick? Yep. So how's it go? You spend $20 with Shell and you start getting points towards free flights? Well, as long as I got one of these signs out front. Yeah, I heard you get points on everything. Petrol oil, bread, milk, snacks. Anything else, sir? Magazines. Barry! It all adds up, Dick. <laughs> I can see that. Flybys. At any Shell outlet where you see the flyby sign. Hi. I'm Russell Crowe. Join me Wednesday night at 7.30 for the 1994 Nescafe. Big break. Nescafe, big break. Yes, Freshwater was changed to Harbord back in 1923, but it's still known as Freshwater Beach. Harbord came from the wife of the New South Wales governor, then Lord Carrington, one Cecilia Harbord. But here we are now for the final of survival, and it's Trevor Hendy, Scott Thompson, Guy Andrews, and the 18-year-old sensation from North Wollongong, Phil Clayton. And Joshua Blair, his best ever position in fifth. What a wonderful effort for the 17-year-old. Simon Martin, Glenn Cowdery also, his best ever effort, and Scott Reeves in eighth, and that will cement his place towards the top of the uh, leader's table. Okay, so we are down to the final four now. And goodness knows just how difficult it is for these guys to get going again. They've been through four races. Each one has been an absolute sprint. It really, to me, is a mind game because they're going to have to go and do it again. Let's see the tactics of Trevor Hendy in particular. Scott Thompson, the endurance person there, as he said in his interview, the longer it goes, the better it gets. Thompson will be hard to beat. They're all hard to beat. Let's see the tactics. It's going to be fascinating. If you were Trevor Hendy, Guy Leach, what would you do in this race? Well, Trevor's going to have to make a break in the ski leg, and I would think it would probably be on the last can coming in. He's going to surge there if he can do that, pull the swells and try and get a gap going into the last swim. His weakness, if anything, is the fact that he's not as strong in the swim as he is in the board and the ski, and in flatter conditions, it doesn't help his cause. And you've got Philip Clayton, who is the fastest swimmer in the field, and that's going to cause some problems for Trevor. OK, let's have a look at the prize money then for this final race. It's five races in the survival format. First place here receives over four and a half thousand dollars nearly four thousand dollars for second place and over three thousand for third and the fourth place getter still a very nice pocket money two thousand one hundred dollars yes and probably more important of all than the money is the overall win here today only seven men have ever won a round of the uncle toby super series Phil, three of them are in this field philip clayton has the chance to become the eighth person only 18 years of age and grant kenny He's doing the work out in front, but he's where he wants to be, I'm sure. Yeah, he's doing the work, Mick, but it doesn't look like he's over extenuating himself. He's really just, uh, he's in a position where he's in control. He doesn't want to get tangled up in any clashes going around the cans. He's, he's in a commanding position. Trevor's doing a very smart thing, sitting on his wash and being quite happy to take the ride. Guy Andrews equally is on Hendy's wash, having a ride. And Scott Thompson's probably got the easiest ride of the lot at this stage. But once we turn this next can and they start to head back into the beach, the waves will make a difference and nobody's going to want to be, you know, one board length behind because that's the point where you may just drop off the back of any little waves that might come through. OK, thanks very much, Grant Kenny. Time now for another Michael Porra Daihatsu for Rozo surf tip. This one very applicable. It's to do with cardiovascular recovery.
One of the most incredible things about the Ironman is because they're so fit, they can get their pulses down very quickly. When they're racing flat out, their pulses may be as high as 180 beats a minute. Have a look at Scott Thompson here. Once he gets on a nice clean wave, look at his pulse come down. Now he's going from about 180 beats a minute, 170, 160, right through, and he's sucking the oxygen in, he's trying to rest. By the time he hits the beach, his pulse can be down around 100 beats a minute. And that is just so important, not just because of distance, but because he feels so fresh when he's going through onto the next leg. Well, they're all looking for a wave now, and there it is, you can see. It's not just the distance, as I've explained, it is the fact that they get to rest. If they've got to paddle the beach, it's so much harder. Oh, and Hendy's dropped off this wave. Trevor Hendy has dropped back. I don't believe that. That is incredible in my mind. And look at Philip Clayton's looked over his shoulder and gone, I don't believe that. So Hendy not only missed the wave, but he's going to have to paddle hard. Grant Kenny's right next to him. I don't believe it, Grant. Yeah, it wasn't anything. I don't think there was a mistake of Trevor's. He'd been dropping slowly back through the board leg up to that point, and that little swell, and it was only a little swell from here, certainly, uh, just didn't build up underneath him. He had to paddle over a little hill to get through, and that was what cost him that little lift. So Scotty Thompson leading the way at the moment from Philip Clayton and Guy Andrews in third, and about 35 metres back to Trevor Hendy. Tim Bell, you'd never discount the big guy, but I would have thought he'll need a lead going into the swim. It's going to take a hell of an effort from here for Trevor Hendy to win. 25 metres behind third place Guy Andrews. That's Trevor Hendy's situation at the moment. Guy Andrews is going brilliantly. Just bear in mind that he's got a fractured foot. It may even be broken and he's still there. Philip Clayton chasing Scott Thompson, the endurance athlete, and he's looking every inch that as we get into the fifth race and he's still going beautifully. Yes, Tim, three of them going into the, the water together on the ski and it's Scotty Thompson, who's looking very strong. Clayton second and Guy Andrews third and Trevor arriving now, not far behind. Trevor Hendy second, seven seconds behind on the turn. I expect Trevor will move right on them. He'll move right up. He's actually really getting a move on now. Look at the look on his face. Hendy's thinking I'm behind. He'd be very cranky with himself, I reckon, Grant Kenny, and he's really looked like he's going for it now. Yeah, he's having a big go now. He knows that he's got to get up onto this pack if there's any chance in that closing swim league. I think you called it right when you said he'd need a, a bit of a lead going into the swim. I've watched him today, and he hasn't been one of the fastest swimmers, and uh, but he's certainly been one of the fastest ski paddlers. Well, you can see Thompson. Scott Thompson is really flying, Grant. Uh, Thompson's going great. He's out on his own doing the work, and uh, you really can't fault him at this stage. He, too, has been swimming well today, too. And uh, really, at this point, is looking good. Phil Clayton, anyone's going to need to... Uh, if they're going to beat him, they're going to have to be in the water 10, 15, maybe 20 metres in front going now, into that final swim leg. Now, Grant, you're dropping off the pace. I may have to ask you another seven or eight questions. Yeah, thanks for that, Mick. I was actually getting out of the way. The, the, uh, the biggest problem here, I think, is with the, the, the wash of the camera boat, and I was just trying to... Um, get out of the way, but I've got to say, it's pretty hard keeping up with these blokes while I'm trying to talk to you. <laughs> Scotty Thompson, though, out in the lead. Clayton in second place there on the left-hand top, and Trevor Hendy powering through in the middle. Guy Andrews in second position. You can see him right behind that Philip Clayton, as you say, Trevor Hendy moving on the outside. So Thompson will be the first to turn. He's about, he's coming straight towards our camera boat where Terry Kennedy is. He's got his head down and he's really going for it. What a great race, Terry. Oh, it certainly is a great four-way battle here. Scotty Thompson, isn't confidence a wonderful thing? After he won that opening round of the spit, he's grown 10 foot tall and bulletproof, Scotty Thompson. He's a born-again Ironman, really, this 30-year-old. Guy Andrews, he had that victory in his home beach of Newcastle. He had a disappointing 13th in the uh, last race at Manly three weeks ago. He's out to make amends in big fashion here. Trevor Hendy has caught the pack. He's making a big move here. And a tremendous run there from Scott Thompson. A little one run came up underneath his boat. Look at the wave behind him. It won't break, but some of them might get a run on it. Brilliant little turn there from Guy Andrews. See him come around and pull onto that run. Great turn from Guy Andrews. Great skills. The only man in your screen right there, the only man ever to beat Trevor Hendy on a short course race. Ten races in the six-year history of the Uncle Toby Super Series have been sprint courses. And that guy right there on the red ski is the only one ever to beat Hendy. It happened here two years ago at Freshwater Beach where he beat Trevor Hendy in a sprint finish. And he's going for it again. It's really tight. Nothing in it. Philip Clayton also, he's back about two or three lengths, but he's still in this. And Trevor Hendy on the blue ski has moved right alongside them. If Hendy can pull a wave and get out in front, he's still a big chance to, to win this. I think he'll need a little bit of a lead, but you can never discount Trevor Hendy. Of course, uh, It'll be interesting to see here, Mick, whether Trevor, the amount of effort he's put in to catch up, whether that will take may take its toll on the next leg in the swim, because this will be his weakest leg coming up. The ski at the moment with the kayak training he's doing is probably his strongest leg, even stronger than the board. But he has caught up a mountain of distance. 
from the last leg to this one. It'll be very interesting. Well, the waves here are going to be just so important. Guy Andrews really sprinting on that red ski. Scott Thompson also turning over to the right because he sees a wave come behind him. And Trevor Hendy really flying as well. Is there a little wave underneath? Trevor Hendy looks like he's pulled over a little one. Scott Thompson just coming into the screen. We're in the second leg of the very last race of the day. Three of them absolutely locked together. Thompson's going to have to push hard to get over this in the middle. I think he will. There's nothing in it. And Philip Clayton's got a little one behind. He's still right in this. The three of them come to the beach. What a sensational race this is going to be. It's going to come down to the last swim leg. Guy Andrews, Scott Thompson, Trevor Hendy, and Philip Clayton is still in this on a little wave. Tim Bailey, what a race to finish. Absolutely sensational. Trevor Hendy goes through the drink station first. Guy Andrews on his hammer. Scotty Thompson on his and Philip Clayton had to be within 20. He's in 20. He's 20 metres behind those two and swims like a fish. It is on for young and old. Look at those top three. They are going hard. Trevor Hendy, Guy Andrews and Scott Thompson. Isn't there some experience there? And Tim Bailey, Phil Clayton is really flying and he is dead set right in this up to his eyeballs. You bet. You watch him wade. You watch him once he hits the water. He is pulling them back now. Even the three of them are together in front. Phil Clayton has pinched probably seven to ten metres on them. And, and Thompson's made a move. Scott Thompson's tried to break them here. He wants to get a move across the sandbank. Now this is where the commitment comes in. Look at Andrews lift his legs. Hendy's still doing it too. This is the hardest part of the race, Guy Leach, where they've got to lift their legs and really go for it. Well, I'd be lifting my legs too if Phil Clayton was, coming, Clayton was coming down on me. He is flying. He ran around that run course probably five seconds faster than the other guys, and they were all pushing each other. This guy has not given up, and he's going to have a big go on the last leg. And he's dolphining now through that early break and also closing the gap here, Grant Kenny. It's shaping as a fantastic finish. Well, as I look back, he's probably only 12 to 15 metres behind. He's certainly closed the gap. That was to be expected, though, as the distance that you see when they're running, the first guys hit the water and start swimming. Obviously, that distance with the tail end of running still closes up dramatically. The difference in time, however, stays the same. The question now is, can Phil Clayton get back onto this pack? It's a reasonably short swim. I would say that, as I've been speaking, he's closed in three metres. I reckon he'll probably get up here. It will be a race in four. Scott Thompson setting the pace. He's doing the work. Guy Andrews sitting very smartly on his heels. Trevor Hendy has dropped back from Scott Thompson's wash. Now onto Guy Andrews' feet. It'll be interesting to see if he can hold the pace. So far today, he hasn't really been able to match these swimmers. And uh, even as I speak now, he's probably dropped a half a body length or more back off Guy Andrews, who's making a move past Scott Thompson. This is tremendous stuff at the front. And don't forget, Phil Clayton is still bearing down from behind. Now only about three to four metres behind Trevor Hendy. Oh, Philip Clayton is absolutely flying. We just saw a great shot from our camera up on the high on the headlands of Freshwater Beach and Philip Clayton. There you can see it. Look at Clayton. He was 15 metres behind. He's almost caught them. He is going so fast. He really is pulling up quickly on them. Hendy desperately trying to hang in in third place. Terry Kennedy, this is a real dogfight. Any four of them could still win this. Is it what? It's really knock them down, drag them out stuff. Guy Andrews rounded the boy in first place. He's got a body length on Scotty Thompson, Trevor Hendy, the master tactician. He's guided himself through the entire five races today, and now he's still in with a great chance of victory. But what about Philip Clayton? He's given him 20 metres going into this swim. If he does win, he certainly deserves it. Has he got any gas left in the tank? That's got to be the big thing. Waves will play an important part as they make this final turn in this fifth race. Well, the 18-year-old from North Wollongong is moving alongside Trevor Hendy. What a sensational performance. Shots from solo ski cam of Guy Andrews. Looking back now to Scott Thompson right behind him. And further back, just on the left-hand side of your screen, there's Philip Clayton pulling alongside Trevor Hendy and coming right into the action. A tremendous finish. If you have just joined us, we have been through. This is, in fact, the fifth race here today of survival. We're down to the final four. Four guys. We started with 21. We lost five. Then we lost four in the next three races and the big four are still going and Philip Clayton is matching with them and Trevor Hendy has been look at Clayton in third he's he's got the six beat kick going he's absolutely flying Grant Kenny fantastic job he's only probably now a length and a half behind Andrews to the extreme right of the pack uh, Scott Thompson still looking strong and in fact has now pulled off Andrew's feet and is doing some work of his own. All three of them clearly pulling ahead of Hendy but with a bit of a way to go in close, anything can happen. Phil Clayton though, he is the big mover. He has closed 15 metres on this pack. They're all great swimmers. He's done a tremendous job. The question now is, with only about 60 or 70 metres left to swim and a few little waves building up the back, will it be enough distance for him to hit the beach in front of Guy Andrews or Scott Thompson? And I think that's where the race will come down to who will be the strongest runner? 
Coming into the wave area now, Philip Clayton has hit the lead. You can see him on the right-hand side of the screen. What a race we've got in our hands. Philip Clayton has hit the lead. He's never won. Only seven have ever won. Will there be a new winner here today? There's a little wave underneath. Philip Clayton's going to look for this one. Philip Clayton's going for it. I think he'll get it. Andrews is going to drop off. Clayton's on the top. It's once someone's over it. I think it's Andrews. Andrews has come from the left-hand side, and Andrews will win. Andrews has taken a wave on the left-hand side. He'll take this right through. He dropped back into second. He was lucky on the right-hand side of the course, but he picked up a beautiful little wave. And he's up, and he's going for the finish line. And Guy Andrews, well done. What a sensational effort. He can't believe it himself. He will take the lead in the series as well. Guy Andrews coming through the solo drink station. He's got his hand in the air. What a finish. Guy Andrews will come through, and he'll win this race. So Guy Andrews slapping the uh, hands of the crowd as he comes through. He's able to cruise across the line now and he's coming through in first position Scott Thompson will get second what a great performance from Scott Thompson coming through in second place and Philip Clayton will take third the young man took the lead but just was in the wrong position third place to Philip Clayton and Trevor Hendy just coming through now and will take fourth what a great finish, Guy Andrews, what a sensational effort from him. He won this very race two years ago, and he has now beaten Hendy twice over the short course, and Hendy coming through in fourth position, just dropped off the pace a little bit in that last swim, but he'll be happy to be in the top four. He's still right up the top there of the uh, leaders in terms of the table. Tim Bailey. Yeah, I've got a couple of wrestling iron men down here with me. Guy Andrews, you just said to me on that last wave, you only forgot one thing, and that was to breathe. Yeah. <laughs> It's so reminiscent of uh, when I won here a couple of years ago, the first time we had this event. We come down to a wave at the finish and the swim and I had to hold my breath. And the look back on the video, it was 12 seconds I held my breath for. I don't think it was that long that time, but it felt like it. When they say survival, they don't muck about. It's a big day, a long, hard day. How would you go if you didn't have a broken foot? <laughs> well, I'll tell you the truth, I didn't even feel it during the race. I know I'll feel it tomorrow, but, uh, you know, no excuses. You know, I felt fine today and, uh, you know, hopefully I can do it again next week. Freshwater Beach salutes you, Guy. A really courageous win. Fantastic. Back to you, blokes. Yes, the magnificent physique of Guy Andrews breaks the Uncle Toby's tape and also Scotty Thompson doing another fantastic job here at Freshwater. We'll be back with more action after the break. Good afternoon, I'm Sandra Sully. Coming up in the 5 o'clock news, airline passengers are warned to prepare for disruptions tomorrow because of a 24-hour strike by aircraft refuelers. The action will affect international and domestic flights. Sydney's third runway noise, the Federal Transport Minister says aircraft will be fined for not sticking to declared flight paths. Bosnia Serbs thumb their noses at the UN and continue their push on Bihać. And Holden fanciers gather in Queensland for a good cause. Details at 5. I've always sort of run pretty well. I mean, I was a good middle distance runner at high school. What I do in the morning is I swim and then when I come home, I'll eat 14 vitamins. I've pretty much grown up on them. You see, with the organic process, no chemicals added, and basically everything natural the whole way through, it just makes a lot of sense. For me, the fact that it's organic is very reassuring because I know there's nothing artificial at it. I think if you care about yourself and your family, you'd have to believe that organic vitabrits are better for you. It's all new and it's just arrived. The wait was worth it. Design World introduces their new collection of designer furniture. Dining suites and lounge settings rich in detail and beautifully presented. It's all available right now at Design World so you can buy direct from the importer. Uncompromising luxury, timeless style, yet it's all priced to sell. Totally affordable when you buy direct from Design World, Parramatta Road, Granville. Furniture from around the world that won't cost you the earth. The bass, the heartbeat. It's the one instrument essential to all forms of modern music. If you've had your hands on a bass before, or you'd like to learn how, why don't you head down to Australia's only bass specialists, the bass player. Coming to the 10 Network, the Old Spice Sports Star Challenge. Eight famous Aussie and Kiwi sportsmen do battle in seven demanding sporting events to decide the Old Spice Sports Star Challenge. It's all about winning. You can win too. Enter the Old Spice competition in stores where you see this entry form and you can be off to the 1995 Rugby World Cup in South Africa 
courtesy of Travel World. Watch the Old Spice Sports Star Challenge on Network 10, Sunday, December 4 at 4 p.m. 8.30 tonight, the movie of the week. Mayday, Out of a land of fire comes the screen's most inspiring love story. Kiss me, it's right. From director Steven Spielberg. That's right, that's right. Holly Hunter, Richard Dreyfus, Roseanne's John Goodman and Audrey Hepburn. Pete. They thought their world had ended. I know you can't see it. It had only just begun. I'm right here. 8.30 tonight, theirs was a promise to love each other always. Freshwater, one of Sydney's famous northern beaches and venue for round four of the Uncle Toby's Super Series. It was survival of the fittest. An exhaustive program here today and in the end Guy Andrews coming through for his second win of the series. But again Grant Kenny, we've had four rounds and four fantastic finishes. Yeah, I think today's uh, final race of four guys was one of the best that I've seen. Young Phil Clayton really, really impressed me coming from so far behind in that final swim leg to, uh, to come through and contend for the lead. Unlucky I thought that the three of them Guy Andrews, Scott Thompson and Phil Clayton didn't catch that final wave. Trevor Hendy by that stage was out of it, but gee, what a race. And uh, good to see Guy Andrews coming through with broken bones in his foot, but Phil Clayton, I think, was somebody who really shone today. OK, let's then recap on today's results, Grant. Yes, well, there they are, of course. Guy Andrews taking out 36 points for position number one. Scott Thompson, a great performer there, and I think you'll find that he'll be a series leader now. Phil Clayton, outstanding. And uh, Trevor Hendy, let's not forget him as we look down through the rest of the field. Dwayne Tyres was a guy I thought might have done a little bit better today, but has been performing consistently throughout the series. Michael King's in there, he had the leader's jersey curse today. All the competitors are talking about it. It seems like nobody wants to wear it. In fact, uh, Dwayne Tyres came back into the tent after round one here today and he said, who volunteers for the leader's jersey for round five? And nobody really put their hand up. So uh, a great race today. Scott Mortimer there finishing off last, of course, from yesterday. But, um, you know, tremendous racing and uh, all the guys, I think, did really well. Yes, Grant, and three of the old hands making it through to the final, but what a performance by the 18-year-old Philip Clayton from North Wollongong. He almost snatched this fourth round. Joining me now is Michael Porra, and yes, what a riveting performance. Well, it was a great performance, wasn't it? He just swam so fast in that last uh, two or three hundred metres. He came flying up from behind them and nearly won it. We nearly had a new winner. Only seven guys, of course, have ever won before, so a great performance. He's going to be a star in this sport, no doubt about it. We've seen some real stars here today. Now, dropping worst performance, how's it looking? Well, on adjusted points, um, we've now got Scott Thompson in the lead. Guy Andrews in second place. Then Trevor Hendy moves up to third. Michael King still in it despite his 14th today because he'll drop that race. Simon Martin and Scott Reeves. And that's the thing. This is three of their best four performances go to make up the points you're seeing on the screen right now. Andy, Phil Clayton has moved up to eight, so he's in the top ten. And we can see Nathan Meyer, the youngster, and Jonathan Crow in 12th position, John Robinson in 18th, and uh, we have Hayden Reese, Steve Pullen, Mark Bennett, down to uh, Sean Parks with the Corey Hutchings, the New Zealand champ, and Craig Riddington, unfortunately, dropping back in the series to 25th, down through to uh, Clint Robinson, Luke Watson, and Scott Mortimer. Yes, and don't forget uh, the Uncle Toby's Super Series Super Win, the magic moments here, and your chance to vote for Trevor Hendy number one, Jonathan Crow two, or Michael King number three. There are the numbers. And also the women's highlights, some fantastic racing in the Devondale Iron Woman Series, and a sensational performance by Linda Halfwig, the 13-year-old from the Sunshine Coast, Michael. Oh, well, for her to finish in front of her, her hero, or her heroine, which is um, Carla Gilbert, was a great performance. Just look at the young lady run here. She is phenomenal. Fantastic performance, and don't forget coverage next week at 2.30, 90 minutes of highlights, and that will be followed by the Old Spice Sports Star Challenge. Dermot Brereton, Scott Goulet, George Gregan, Jonathan Crow, and Damien Keogh. And Perth in two weeks' time. It's all happening here on Network 10, the Ironman series. Until next week, and also Perth, Gordon Bray, 10 Sport. going on here.